Well, hello and welcome to the skating lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm, I'm Jonathan Pryor. Oh, <laughs> I totally stepped over you. Yeah. You have That is Olympic champion Megan Duhamel. And you, <laughs> you have to let yourself be introduced. Megan, oh, have, has it sunk it in yet that you have a gold effing medal at the Olympics? Right. <laughs> no effing way. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> I, I keep them on my pillow, so when I wake up in the morning, I just look over at them, and I'm like, oh, I don't have to compete again today. Because for the first day, the day I woke up after the pairs event, mm -hmm. I competed so much in one week that I woke up and I was like, oh my gosh, I need to skate today. And then I was reminded once I looked at my medals that no, I don't need to do a long program ever again. And are you happy? Because you're very competitive. <laughs> but you're like, you were very happy to be done. It's very perplexing. Um. I'm very competitive, but I am very, very happy to be done because I feel like so settled. I like there's so many things I want to do with my life, so many projects I want to take on and like other things that I can be competitive in. But as far as skating goes, I feel like I'm I'm completely ready to leave the competitive world to the other skaters, some of the younger ones and let them thrive. So you don't like have you worked out since you competed? <laughs> that's really funny because I haven't. And this morning at breakfast, I was telling Caitlin Osman, I think I need to go to the gym today. I need to do something. I'm going crazy. And she was like, oh my God, you're two days into retirement and you already need to do something. <laughs> what are you going to do with your energy? <laughs> all I'm going to the gym. Like, what are you doing with all of your energy? What have you, yeah. Cheering for the men. Okay. Well, the day, the day after our long program, we had a lot of media. We had a full day of, of obligations so it was quite busy. Mm -hmm. And then yesterday I kind of like puttered around and saw my parents and did like a few random things that I needed to do, eating bad food and, um, Meat? <laughs> no, no, of course not. <laughs> uh, but Don't now, and today there's no skating event. So now I really feel today I'm going a little, like I'm itching to do something. Well, so, and so I went to coach the North Koreans at their practice and I will be going to the gym after this. I would like you to start coaching KMT in some respect. I think that this needs to happen. Just, we need to watch it. <laughs> that would be fun. I mean, I watched them do their practice because right now they, they give the pair skaters and the men like additional practices because of course the skaters going to Worlds can't just take a two week vacation right now. Mm -hmm. right. Um, so everybody took a few days off and then they got back into it now. Now, do you practice your exhibition or you just wing it? We, we'll practice. Like we'll go and train like probably two days before the gala, but um, I mean, just to kind of go over everything. It's an old number. We'll probably do Piano Man, which is a really comfortable number for us. Mm -hmm. um, like, I want to go on the practice just to do one more triple lutz because I don't like leaving it mm -hmm. in the state I left it with, like, a little mistake. So let's so talk about So I might have that. to do a part of an additional practice just to do a triple lutz and feel better about myself. So let's talk about the triple lutzes. Did you and Eric each feel like you need to make, it, make us a little nervous about the lutzes? Like... <laughs> yeah. well, and Eric did it cleanly on one foot and I had yeah. to miss it um <laughs> they've been going really well at home so I mean we expected to do them a little bit cleaner in each phase of the competition here that was a little bit of a letdown in the practice sessions um Eric's in particular was very one foot and clean every practice um so we were a bit disappointed in the team event when they they didn't come out as clean as they have been um I'll never know how I missed that Lutz and then just came around the corner and did a quad because I mean, that's, that seems a little crazy to me that I didn't freak out after yeah, missing my butt. Right? It's pretty quick, right? There's, yeah, we don't have long. We, and then we go right into the Sao to Toe as well. So there, there's not really a moment to regroup. But I think we're just so well trained and we didn't fall on a throw quad since we've been here. They've been extremely consistent. So I could rely on that. Were you nervous okay. about the quad going into it after the Lutz? I remembered like thinking nothing. Like for the first time, like in my skating career, my mind was blank. And I, Eric and I felt very, very calm for that long program. Um, usually, even when I do shows, I annoy everybody in the change room because I sit there and I'm like, guys, I'm nervous. I'm so nervous. I don't want to go out there. I'm nervous. And um, I put a lot of pressure on myself to skate to my potential at home in a show or in a competition. Um, but when we were going on the ice for that long program, Eric and I looked at each other and we were like, I'm like scarily calm. And he was like, yeah, me too. Like, I don't know. Should we pump ourselves up? And we were like, let's just go with it. Let's just see, like, how this goes. Um, so when I, like, kind of missed the LUTs, it didn't even phase me. I was like, okay, I'm landing the quad. And that's all I thought about. 
So my mind, I don't think, has ever been that blank for a long program ever. Now, do you do you think it was the exhaustion from doing so many competitions in so many days that you just <laughs> the adrenaline highs and lows and kind of maybe yeah. um, we came here so prepared, like more prepared than we've ever been in our life, mentally and physically. Um, even Eric was saying he's never felt so focused as he did the week and a half that we were the one week we were competing here, but the week and a half we were training as well. Um, so I actually feel like I could go out and compete again if I needed to right now. I don't feel that exhausted. I think that by the pairs long, we were so comfortable in the ring. We were so, we felt at home. So it was easy to just relax. Hmm. So I want to ask, so you changed something in your training. I remember you saying that last year you used to alternate your programs. You did a short one day long the next. And then you do yeah. you do pieces of the other one, right? But yeah. then this year you do both every day? Is that what you changed? or? Um, we don't do full both, but mm -hmm. like if we did uh, a short on Monday, we would always do a short Monday. We, we didn't test fate cause we take a full weekend, a Saturday mm -hmm. and a Sunday off. So Monday we would do a short and then on the next session we would train the long beginning to end, mm -hmm. but leaving out a few elements, but we would skate it beginning to end without stopping. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we would do the jumps and throws. Sometimes we would just do lifts and spins. It depended on the day. Mm -hmm. And then when we did a long program and training, the next session we'd skate the short beginning to end and do some of the elements. Mm -hmm. um, but it kept the program running and flowing from beginning to end, and we felt like that was important. So in that moment, in, in the moment when the Lutz didn't go maybe as you wanted it to go, and you turn around and, and you have this feeling of calm, is this a feeling of trust because you, you can trust the training? Or is this a moment that like you can't, you don't take the time to self-edit and analyze what just happened? Because I know, I know sometimes for me, like, as a performer, I'm too busy editing the previous thing instead of focusing on the thing coming up. And I, when I saw you turn around and then do the quad, I was like, that's like, from my perspective, the perfect example of most likely not editing what just happened, but continually moving forward. I, I'm not sure what yeah, you're- That's what like you're... almost it, like, it's like I just forgot about the Lutz. As soon as I was doing the choreography into the quad, the twist hadn't happened. The lutz hadn't happened. I was just doing a throw quad. Okay. Um, and I actually haven't missed a lutz in a program since the long at Skate America, like in any training. Mm -hmm. So I had every right almost to get a little shocked by it and a little bit like ruffled. But mm -hmm. I just, I don't even know how I didn't. I remembered, I had a moment where I remembered very particularly the Grand Prix Final 2014, the first time Eric and I won it. Stoblova and Klimov had skated like perfectly before us. And I did the exact same thing on my Lutz. I put my hand down, but then the rest of the program was clean. So mm -hmm. in the few seconds after the Lutz, I remembered that. I was like, okay, this is just like Grand Prix Final 2014. You can do the rest. And um, as we were preparing for the quad, I, Eric was very calm and very stable. And he, he had that quad takeoff in the perfect place. Mm -hmm. And when he has me in the perfect place, my work is very easy like so to speak, he it gets into the air nicely and all I have to do is focus on my landing. Now did you see- And then I had a moment though, I had a small like moment going into the sow toe toe after. Because the triple sow, double toe, double toe is what I missed in Sochi. And it's like eight away at my soul for four years to come back to the Olympics <laughs> and land a freaking triple sow. Okay. And so when after landing the quad, I was like, I had a moment where I was like, there's no more room for error now. Like you have to go clean. Um, but then I used that mistake from Sochi like to drive me to land an amazing throw, uh, an amazing triple sow, double toe, double toe here. Mm. And the novice me would have killed me if I missed a triple sow at the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> now, and Hometown Glory works better with the sow because the criticism of the program in 2016 was that you went down the ice for the Lutzes and then again you went down the ice for the toes and now we have the different pattern into it. Yeah. Yeah. And that was like the small adjustment we needed to make. The reason we went and did the toes for a few years after Sochi was literally because I became like a mental mess with a triple sow. Mm -hmm. The whole year of Sochi, I was missing that stupid triple sow. And in competition at home, I would never miss it. So it created like a mental issue for me. And the next year, Eric and I are so lucky that it was like, well, the triple sow doesn't work. Let's just do a triple toe. We had the luxury to like kind of be like, well, we have other jumps to choose from. 
Right. Um, but then last year I got a little bit of an injury and I couldn't do the triple toe anymore. So it forced us to go back to the sow. And that was your foot last year? or? Yeah, I had like my left foot. Every time I would pick for the toe, it would send this jabbing, terrible pain into my foot. We weren't sure if it was a, a nerve problem or a stress fracture. Um, last summer, I finally did an MRI and I just have a like a piece of bone that's floating in my foot and sometimes it gets stuck. Um, so I just, I don't practice triple toes anymore at all. I didn't practice it and then at Worlds, we needed to do it. And I somehow managed that and I haven't done it since then. And in general, you're the type of girl that just practices all the jumps, whether you include them in the program or not, which I think is pretty amazing. Some, yeah. If I'm having like a good day, I mean, okay. if, if, if my body's feeling tight and sore and it's feeling old, I, I don't practice a triple loop or a triple flip or anything. But okay. if I'm feeling good, I, I'm like, oh, yeah, let's just go for it. Try everything. She did them all and when I was there with the camera. And as a single skater. <laughs> you okay. did them all when I was there with the camera, and she wanted to do a better triple toe, triple toe than Stilbova. That's what I remember. I, yeah. <laughs> I can do triple loop, triple loop combo. A loop is my favorite jump, but it's unfortunately not Eric's favorite jump, so we never included it together. Okay. He's very, very reliable with the, the sow and the toe and over the years with the Lutz, but the loop was not his thing, although it was my favorite. Sounds like you should just do several in the exhibition while he just does something else, right? I might, I might have to do triple Lutz in the exhibition. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't, but I'll dream about it. <laughs> you okay. did brainstorm in your head what program, what content you would need if you wanted to make a run for the singles in Canadian Ladies. So what jumps would you have done? See, the this is where I ran into trouble because I did spend a few months last spring like with serious consideration. I even talked to Skate Canada that I was going to compete in the ladies' event, um, in which they laughed at me. Uh, <laughs> the problem was, because my foot, and I couldn't do the triple toe, I felt like in the short program, I was going to be at a huge deficit without a triple-triple combination. Right. And that worried me a little bit, that I wouldn't make it through the long program. Like, without a triple-triple, now in ladies, you, you're kind of not making it out of the short. That didn't right. prevent um, Larkin from making any of it. So well, I'm, I mean, like if I made the Olympic team, I would have probably only been at the Olympics for the ladies' short. Oh, oh, um, okay. But my content was going to be um, two lutzes, two loops, uh, axle half loop sow, a flip, and then another axle. Okay. Right. I had to work on the edge right. of my flip so because I get the e on my flip. Okay. So I I spent about a month learning a flip from an in uh, from a three turn instead of a mohawk which brought me more on the, to the correct edge. And um, Gabby helped me with it at um, Stars on Ice last year. And Caitlin Osman was helping me get all level four spins. Like so we were really serious about this. This is when Eric was injured and in rehabbing and you were just basically going crazy. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And then throughout Stars on Ice, Eric was still at Stars on Ice. Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. I would just do a little bit of extra practice sessions because I was like, I was really seriously considering it. And then we started choreography for the short program when we came home from Stars and Ice. And we were on the ice for about five hours a day. And I was like, I could not go back on the ice again to train singles right now. And that was the answer that I, that I couldn't do. Yeah, it. Yeah, right. <laughs> but did you learn that when, when you started, did you learn the lots first? Is that why that edge came more naturally to you than the flip edge? No. When I did singles, I never got the E on the flip. But when Eric and I did the flip for our first few seasons, they always told us that we both were flat. So it was like the explanation mark or the E, however they want right. to call it. Um, but Eric and I were a little bit tricky sometimes. So for one season, um, at Worlds in Nice, for example, we were doing a real Lutz in the short and then the flip toe toe in the long. But they were giving us an E on the flip. So when Eric and I were filling out our planned program content, we said, we're going to say we're doing a Lutz toe toe in the long. And this is how we do our Lutz with a Mohawk. And then we're planning a Lutz. It's on a Lutz edge, so we can't get the deduction. And um, we actually got away with it. We got called <laughs> a real Lutz in the short. And then in the long, they called our flip a Lutz because we said that we were intending it to be a Lutz. And then we got home from that world and we were like, oh, that was a bit risky. We probably shouldn't do this anymore. Uh, so we took the flip out altogether. <laughs> so okay. is there gamesmanship when people fill out that sheet? Because Aliona said that she was going to do a throw quad sow and a throw triple axle. And Jason Brown always says he's going to do quads and then they never materialize. So the ISU makes us fill out this sheet at every competition. So it technically should be up to date for each competition. 
like when we arrived here, we had to update it mm -hmm. um, from the sheet the ISU had at the Grand Prix final. Mm -hmm. So we had to change our order of elements because it was different than our long program was at the Grand Prix final. Right. So I'm not right. sure if people like play games or not on it. Like, Absolutely. We all knew that Aliona wasn't doing a quad twist or a throw quad. So I find it funny that that they did that. Did you know how well she, she skated before she you? She didn't need to. She was going to win with a beautiful, clean performance. So now she won the opposite way of you. Like she didn't play the points with her distribution of her jump elements. So did you know how well she... didn't she, need to. Yeah. Did you know how well she skated before you? We did. I mean, I always watch everybody. Um, I didn't watch her in particular mm -hmm. because we were skating second. Eric and I got off the warm up and we were just pacing backstage. Mm -hmm. But... You could hear the audience, and I didn't hear anybody applaud once. And I, I was like, they are either skating terribly, or they're so good that this audience is mesmerized. Mm -hmm. And then um, we had to walk through like this tunnel. It's daunting. It's a black tunnel, and it's so stressful. Mm -hmm. And there was there's the TV screen in there, and you could see the tech box. And I saw a whole row of green. And I was like, okay, <laughs> like this, they that probably skated that. really well. Yeah. <laughs> um, and seeing that whole row of green also indicated to me that um, they weren't going to review anything. So their score would come up faster. So Eric and I would have less time mm. to meander around the ice. Um, so we were very prepared when we went on the ice, knowing their score was going to be high. But in as competitive as we are, in all honesty, we came to the Olympics knowing that we were fighting for a bronze medal with Taras Van Morza. We're not mm. stupid. We knew yeah. that the odds yeah. of beating the Germans or Schwein Han was, was almost impossible. Mm -hmm. So we weren't really ruffled by their score because... It wasn't our plan to beat them. Mm -hmm. So then is Elton John like rougher with you as a competitor? More Does she try to be more intimidating when you're... I, I don't make eye contact with her. Okay. I just don't do it. I just yeah. walk by. She doesn't make eye uh, contact with her she's students. She's been really mean about Eric and I in the media for many years. And um, I've just it chosen just not to give her... To, her yeah. Yeah. Do you notice that when her students don't do well, she bolts before they go to the kiss and cry? I did. I didn't know that. I didn't notice who was in the kiss and cry with Teresa Van Morozov, but um, then she was at the boards in the team event with Koliata, um, Elton. So yeah. I I don't understand what's going on. So there's a lot. We of call people. Elton John as well. Everybody does. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so after I started that, this is spread. <laughs> I don't know if it was you that started it, but it is a thing. Yeah. It, I was the rude one. So um... <laughs> <laughs> my brother even even says. Why doesn't her team skate to Elton John? Yeah. <laughs> so she, if you notice, because NBC has a great enhanced feed that we need for all competitions, where there will be the, it's the camera on you skating, and then you get to see Bruno and whoever the skinhead guy is standing next to him that coaches you. I don't okay. know his name. That's Ian. Sounds very <laughs> Quebecois. I'm not going to get it. Okay. So, and then there's like the review box and then there's like a stats thing about like Megan and Eric called their tryout a revelation in 2010. Like they have all of the, uh, Oh yeah. Interesting. Fun I don't think I've used that word, but yeah. Yeah, I guessed it. So, <laughs> so but you get to see that she watched the entire program and you get to see her reaction to everything. And by the time they get off the ice, she's gone. Like they disappointed her and she had bolted from that performance. So, well, I haven't seen her since then. So I'm not sure where she went to. Maybe she's back in Russia. Mm -hmm. Maybe she's preparing mm -hmm. Senya and Fedor for Worlds. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. But I, I honestly haven't seen her um, or Tarasova and Morozov, to be honest. So, speaking of Tarasova, she congratulated Yuzuru Hanyu when he won. This is Tatiana Tarasova. Tatiana Tarasova, okay. And you know, she also sometimes commentates about your performances on Russian television. I know. Did you see her at the Olympics? <laughs> Did she congratulate you? I didn't see that photograph. So, I saw her with Eliona. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? I didn't get, I didn't see her. I didn't get a congratulations. And I, I mean, I've seen and I've heard how rude she is to Eric and I in comments. And, I'm actually a little bit sad about that because when I first made it to the the big international scene of competing in Grand Prix, I was so excited to get a picture with the famous Tatiana Tarasova. And I mean, a lot of her students had been my idols over the years. And at the like 2008 Eric Bombard trophy, I took a picture with her. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I had really admired her. So I, I don't admire her as much anymore because she's been so terribly rude to us. And I that's kind of sad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So now, I didn't see her. My brother saw Maxim Trenkov at the convenience store with more uh, Vladimir. It's Morozov, the 
the pair skater. Yeah. Right. Um, but I also haven't seen Maxim Trankov here. He's another one of your favorites. So. Yeah. Well, he w- I never had a problem with him until he started saying mean things about Eric and I in the media. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did it feel weird without Stopova there and her dog? Because she brings the dog to the events, correct? She hasn't brought her dog in a while, though. Okay. I'm not sure um, why. Mm-hmm. It was. She's been at almost all of our competitions, like mm-hmm. major events over the years. Um, so, I mean, I guess it was like a little bit different not having her here, but the field was still really tough regardless if they were here or not. And I'm not, I'm really not sure where they would have factored into everything. When you right. found out that she wasn't going, were you shocked or what was your reaction? Like... I wasn't shocked because mm-hmm. we've seen the McLaren report for the mm-hmm. last three years. Um, we've heard the ramblings from the IOC and the ISU. So no, I wasn't shocked. Um, I was more shocked about Buchan and Stepanova mm-hmm. because I've heard I I haven't ever heard rumors about them involved in this, so that was more shocking. Um, but I mean, as human beings, of course we feel bad because they they worked hard for something. They worked hard to represent their country at the Olympics um, in the best way that they could, their version of whatever they were doing. But at the same time, you want things to be an even playing field. You want you want justice, right? Mm-hmm. The athletes want things to be right and to be fair. Mm-hmm. So. I don't, other than what's come up in the McLaren report, we don't know either what happened with them. Right. So I want but to ask. But the last few years, and then they just choose not to go to competitions. And, you know, it's been a little mysterious. She's always shopping with Johnny in Philadelphia. I don't know who she's seeing in Philadelphia. It's where he is. It's very strange. Well, but I'm you sure. know what? I have to say, I have to say, because we know how competitive she is, right? Mm-hmm. Like, we remember that European Championships when Fedor fell going into the throw. Gosh. But, um, at the Grand Prix final this year, it was the nicest Senya, the most gracious and nice girl. Um, she was openly talking to everybody. Very, very nice. So I'm not sure if she's hit a little bit of a turning point, um, but a lot friendlier than she used to be. Um, Fedor's always been extremely, extremely friendly and nice. Um, and not that she's not been nice. She's just been very competitive, right? right. Like yeah. the personality you saw while she was skating was usually how she was in no, the change room as well. No, but my, um, my fa- I did miss a big change this year in competing with her, um, in her attitude and her approach. And it was a lot more warm. So was Aliona warmer now? Because you two seemed very warm when you were talking. And in the past, she has not always been so warm to her competitors. So she See, once mooed at someone when they were eating is what I heard. I, I know. And I, I mean, I've heard that many a times and, <laughs> <laughs> this, this skater is extremely insulted by that. Um, Aliona has actually always been pretty nice to me. And I've competed with her like since my very first partner, Ryan Arnold. Um, it was like Ryan and I's claim to fame that we beat Aliona and Robin in a long program once at Nebelhorn. Like useless information, but I'll never forget it. <laughs> <laughs> she was happy when you won Worlds too in 2015, yeah. I remember. We talked about it on She's Facebook. always been extremely nice to Eric and I. Eric trained with her for many years. Um, and I mean, she was my idol, like for many, many years, like even still now. So I wouldn't say we've been like best buddies, but we've always been very nice to each other. Um, we're friends with her husband, Liam, who's really amazing. And I mean, I've known Bruno Massot for so long as well. So there's a very warm energy between all of us, including actually the Chinese Shui and Han as well. Hmm. So now, do you think Aliona will continue skating? Oh my God. <laughs> Absolutely. She is going to want another gold medal at the Olympics. Okay, okay. (laughs) When they asked us in the press conference, um, will you be going to Worlds? Like, Eric and I were just adamant. No. And Aliona, of course. Like, I, she loves it. She loves, she thrives in this, this life. And um, I think she's going to have to convince Bruno to keep going. But I think that she absolutely doesn't want to stop. She shouldn't stop. I mean, she's going to go forever. A part of me wants to see her skate with Hao Zhang. Like they are the un they are each the unstoppable iconic pair skater. So Hao Zhang Like they should go for Olympics number six together. What is his <laughs> official nickname for you? Do you call him Big China? Do you what is your official I call him Big Man. Big Man. Okay. Yeah, I always say, Hey Big Man. <laughs> uh, he and loves I mean Hao Zhang, somebody I've known forever too. I competed mm-hmm. in two thousand one with Hao Zhang. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm I'm good friends with his little partner. She's amazing, and I love that little girl so much. The new um, daughter, Zhao Zhao Yu. 
Yes. The, the new of, partner right now, yeah. She the, speaks very good English, so I hang out with her all the time. I know her as the daughter, because they were the father and the daughter, and this is the new daughter. Because yeah. she used to be the team in the light blue. That's how I used to differentiate. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. She's such a beautiful skater, though, and such a nice person, and I just... Her arms, especially, she really um, moves them, like, so elegantly. Yeah. She's, she's the swan in their program, yeah. and... Yeah. Like, she's kind of exotic looking. I find it's very, very interesting. A very interesting look on the ice. She's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. They look like they studied Elena Berezhnaya a lot with the free leg. You notice it was Swee <laughs> a lot. And I feel like, yeah, there's a lot of that. And her wrists, like, her wrists are so beautiful when she skates. Yeah. Like, and I I, I was really happy for them after the short program and a little bit sad. When we were going on our warm-up and we heard their score, I, don't, I didn't see them skate because I was putting my skates on, but I was like, whoa like 128 like they they don't normally score that low so we were a little bit sad for them so no, especially I for her believe the third think, chinese third, i'm sorry um i couldn't even believe that the third chinese pair didn't make the long i, I mean i know that they had had struggles but to me yeah. that was that was a bit of a shock mm-hmm. um, they need to extend the like they need to make 20 pairs go to the long Mm-hmm. This is so unfair. I mean, look at how good the Australians skated. World right. Junior Champions. They skate a clean program and, like, no long program. <laughs> but do yeah. you notice that usually with an event, if the first couple skaters on the ice skate really well, there just tends to be an energy for the whole event. Yeah. So when there were yeah. 16 pairs and it started with Kirsten just nailing it, the whole yeah. event, it was one of the greatest nights of skating. People were texting. People called you Glittery Mary Lou Retton. I was getting text oh, messages. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? When I saw, I was back in my room resting between practice and competition, and normally I would watch everything, but I was trying to take the quickest power nap. And when I woke up and I saw Kirsten and Michael's score, mm-hmm. I was like, "Wow!" Like instantly, this is going to be a great pairs event mm-hmm. because of exactly that. They they started the momentum and they created this energy, um, and everybody just built off of it to start an event with one thirty two. Just a right. few years ago, that would medal at Worlds. Right. So, she, I mean, that was like an unbelievable place to start. And 74 points was ninth in the short. Like, that's that's crazy. So who's yeah. doing her dresses and your dresses? Because, she, you know, you both have figured out your costume game this season. She looks better <laughs> than ever. The hair is good. The body yeah. is good. Like, she's more artistic than ever after working with Julie. So who's doing your costumes? We each have somebody different. Okay. Um, well, her short program is made by the lady who does my costumes, mm-hmm. uh, Madame mm-hmm. Cordero, this lady um, in Boucherville. Mm-hmm. And Kirsten did her long program costume with the man who does the ice dancer stuff, Tessa's okay. costumes. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. And her long program dress is really, really nice. I love it. Yeah. yeah. It so, works perfectly for the program. So how did you feel about their performance? Did you Have you seen it since? I mean, we know that you like to watch. Yeah. So, okay. I did. I went back and I watched it. And um, I mean, that's exactly how they train. They train so consistently. So the short program was a bit of a shame mm-hmm. because we I've never actually seen Mike do a double toe like that in practice. Mm-hmm. And they, they put in all the right work, mm-hmm. like all of the work over the years. And, you know, their, their look and their style is starting to meld together. Their twist is bigger than ever right now. Those throws are rock solid. And I mean, that double axle half loop triple sow is always going to be a huge risk. I mean, I feel like I'd be so scared taking off for the double axle, knowing, you know, knowing everything that the risk that's involved with it. Um, And it's really hard to time the unison on that. So I think that that particular element will always be a little bit of a hit and miss. Um, But everything else is growing. And I was happy to see that they were rewarded with a high score for what they did. Because I feel like sometimes they've skated really well and um, over the last year or two and been a little bit lowballed in the score, um, almost as if the judges haven't recognized the improvements that they've made. And I really do think they've made a lot of improvements. Yeah, I would agree. She she looked like a star at these Olympics. I have to say she upped her I game. I think she loves that long program, the... I don't know how to say it because I can't speak French. But... Or whatever, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> she owns it. Yes. She loves it. She yeah. seems to love skating with Julie. You can see, like, there's, like, a... They have, like, a girl mance going on, I think, on the ice or yeah. something. Yeah. And she's, like, person's in really good shape right now, so I think she feels very confident as well. Is mm. she still doing eccentrics? She doesn't do eccentrics um, with me. I don't know if she does it on her own. But I go privately. Or sometimes I go with um, Marissa. 
So it depends. But Kirsten never comes. Okay. She used to come. We went to Eccentrics together. She she does a lot with our gym trainer. I know that. But okay. um, she doesn't do Eccentrics with me, no. Oh, okay. Well, now, I'm not sure. Alexa and Chris's performances. Overall, I would have to say that Chris Kinnearm had a pretty good Olympics for him. He, you know what? He lands a lot of jumps in practice. Mm-hmm. I know that they get a lot of hype over, like, a lot of hate over missing jumps. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the competition jumps are, like, purely a confidence thing. Mm-hmm. Because he land like, especially the triple sow. They, sometimes they did a side by side triple sow in practice, and Eric and I were wondering if it was a double because mm-hmm. it looked that easy. Mm. So I think that the, the competition jitters gets them on those jumps. Sometimes when they go wrong, his shoulders go all the way up to his ears. When you see in the air, the uh, Belinda, oh. I think her name is, who's the international feed commentator from Australia, was breaking down his jump. She did a pretty good job. The, with it. Yeah. the technique. In- I can see that. And I mean, he probably <laughs> feels so much pressure every time he takes off for a jump in competition. Mm-hmm. And the more people harp about it, the more pressure he feels about it. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I think that that's, that's unfortunate. Yeah. And especially because yeah. we saw him in practice really landing a lot of jumps and her doing very smooth throws. So she looked ticked after the long, and I want to... Like, I heard, I didn't I didn't see, but I've heard that she was maybe not so happy even after the short. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I hate to go on this, like, rant. I'm curious, like, when you went to your first Olympics, the what was the energy like for you, like, even on the first warm-ups? Do you remember, like, what the overall, like, the energy was so different in Sochi. I don't feel like we can compare it to Pyeongchang. Okay. When I, when we went on the six minute warm up in Sochi, it was like we had stepped on the ice in the middle of a hockey game. The audience was just yelling at the top of their lungs, Russia, Russia, Russia. Uh, and like, it was really like daunting and terrifying. Um, yeah. And here it was a completely different atmosphere. So I don't know if we can say it's that first, like that they didn't skate their best because it was their first Olympics. I think once you're in the venue and you're going on the ice, we run every competition the same. Right. So I'm just curious because, like, in the warm ups in general, just as a total, you know, viewer, I yes. just saw a dark energy kind of from her that I that unnerved me a little bit. Okay. I think I think one of her finest qualities is, I think she's a tremendous skater and she gives so much. He needs it. So, so, so often she's giving him energy. She's Mm -hmm. checking in with him. She's giving him a reassuring smile. And this time she seemed a little dark and off kilter to me, which I wasn't used to. And I found him in the warm up trying to lighten her up. But something about her energy for me, I could just tell maybe something was askew for her. And I'm sure that once you start a warm up that way and then subsequently yeah. a, 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 a program that way that it's really hard to shake that. It is. Um, the energy you take to the warm up is generally the energy that you will have for your performance. There's not really enough time to, to do a 60 yeah. of that. Yeah. Um, I didn't see that, but I did hear that maybe she wasn't so happy after the short program um, results or scores, or I'm not sure exactly what part of it. Okay. Um, you, I'm also not sure what their personal goals were here at these games. Right. Everybody has different expectations and different goals. So I don't know if they thought they were going to be top five or top 10 or top 15. I have no idea. Right. So maybe they fell short of what their personal goals were in the short program. So then it made them nervous. Right. Uh, I I wasn't in the venue for their long program, so I can't say. But I I did see their practice sessions in which they were practicing actually quite well throughout the week. In the warm-up, there was a shot of her. She did a perfect triple sow cow, like textbook technique. I, I don't think I saw her miss triple sows all week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They were solid. Um, now, oh. I want to ask you, because where is the TV? Because I cannot stand excuse making. And the Kinnearms have gotten... Over. A, the Kinnearms have had a lot of difficulties happen. I yeah. also know personally you had a lot of problems happen last year, but you didn't talk a lot about them when you had bad performances. Mm-hmm. And they connect that they connected the school shooting to the. I've gotten a lot of messages about this, and I, I saw an article in like the LA Times or something too about that. And I'm was, gonna say that was a that was a 
an unfortunate misinterpretation. I thought that was just them tripping on their words. I took it. Did you watch they, the Andrea Joyce interview? Because it came quickly. Yeah, yeah and, and I think they were trying to say, I think they were trying to acknowledge that that had happened. And, and I think that they were trying to skate well so that they could say that they would like to have done that in honor of this tragedy. And, and I felt like maybe just some words got jumbled and it sounded like, well, we were really upset by it, so we didn't skate well. Do, do you know uh, what I'm then saying? Then they walked I, that back in another article, but it was just connected so quickly. Then I'm like, where are you watching about the school shooting and how do you know how many people died? Is it like on a headline in Pyeongchang? So I wanted to ask, like, was there a TV backstage where this was? Oh, my happening? God. We don't even have TVs in our room. Okay. Uh, the TV backstage only shows the sporting events. Oh. You can change the channel to, like, different venues, but they're all just in venue. So, I mean, of course, like, I saw it come up on my Twitter feed, mm -hmm. but I was focused on what I had to do here. So I just didn't, Look, like, click on it. I didn't look into it or research into it, as you could say. Um, maybe somebody from back home started sending them stuff. I, I saw something in the LA times about that, but we're living here in like such a bubble. It's almost like the rest of the world is invisible to us. Like, right. I don't even know what to expect in the real world when I get back home because we're just living in this like secured bubble. Well, Trump so is still president. So nothing, you know, nothing yeah, has changed, you know, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> not that drastically. Yeah. <laughs> But I do know that, like, going along the lines, because I did read an article where, like, the IOC was thinking of sanctioning them for these comments. And I do know that we were all, I was, when we went on the medal ceremony for the team event, um, and Alexa and Chris were there, we had a big speech about what we were allowed and not allowed to do, and that we're not, like, everything is so particular with sponsors and different things here. Like, we couldn't go up on that medal presentation and yell, go Canada, or I love you, Trump, or I hate you, Trump, or anything about nationalism, gang-related, like nothing. Hmm. So I think that whatever it was that was said crossed the line. Oh. What I think it, it was but it doesn't have anything to do with skating, so I don't even know why it's worth like mentioning in an interview. So did, was yeah, that I the think... same thing in Sochi? Because you were talking about how it felt different in the warm-up, and the one thing is that when I was in Beijing for the Olympics, there were people yelling and running with flags, you know, with the Chinese flag. So I think anyone who competes yeah. in Beijing needs to be prepared for this. Especially did you see the Russian people in the stands, though? Did they show it on TV? No, but we saw the North Korean cheerleaders, who the I'm North a big Korean. fan of. Okay. I Crap. think they need to be at every event. <laughs> so much unison and synchronicity. Unbelievable. But there's a group of people in two different locations in the stands. And because Russian flags are not allowed by any of the skaters, athletes, support team, nothing. But they're dressed up as Russian flags. They have huge flags. And they're just screaming, go Russia, 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 the whole six minute warm up. And it is very obnoxious. They're like hooligans. I've heard that they were hired and brought there from Probably. Putin. I don't know, I don't know, but that's what the rumor is. And um, they were really annoying on that six minute warm up. Um, and in the team event, I, I didn't quite know. I heard noises, but I didn't know what it was. And when we were bowing in the team event, Eric said, let's bow to the Russians. And he turned to <laughs> face them. So then I was like, okay, that's where they're sitting. And after the team events long, I looked straight up at them as soon as we finished. And I gave them a fist pump. <laughs> like, and the more they were chanting about Russia in that six-minute warm-up, the more I was motivated to skate well. So you yeah. know what? They helped me. In the team event, did you know that when Mariah Nagasu landed her triple axel, you jumped out of your seat and it's shown on TV? Oh my God, I was so excited. Um, did you also see her almost hit the boards, like on her preparation going into it? And she kind of like pushed herself off the boards? No. No, I didn't see and that from the angle. In her very what? beginning, maybe from your angle, it wasn't obvious. Like she does her starting position, then she kind of goes around to the triple axel, but on her way around, she like nicked the corner of the boards and almost like did a little shuffle, pushed herself off the boards. And I was like, oh my God, that was amazing. Is she gonna land a triple axel now? It made the triple axel more exciting. There did look like a moment of unsteadiness that I was unsure of, like a, almost a balance check kind of. And yeah. I guess that's what that was, okay. And you know what, she lands the triple axel like that. Like every time I see her in a warm up or a practice, it's like that. So yeah. it's a shame that she struggles with it in competition when it is so easy for her in practice. Mm -hmm. okay. So it was like, yes, she finally did it. And I, I was really excited. So now, what was going on with the box of the OAR, Olympic athletes from Russia? Because they're 
skaters were not in the box. At least the first night of your short program, it was very strange and just. It was just like their coaches and doctors and people. That was weird. Yeah. And no one, like in Canada's box, even people that weren't part of the team event were all there supporting everybody. We were um, all very Canadian with one another. Not in know. the OAR team box. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, you, there's no rule, right? Like you don't need to have your box full. Mm -hmm. um, and they, their box was just a little bit like sad. I felt like it was just a sad box. Yeah. We were beside Italy at the end. Once it narrowed from 10 to 5, we got to be beside Italy. And that was fun because I thought the Italians were very enthusiastic about everybody. And they were having a good time the way that the Canadians were. They do know how to have a good time. That's were the right. Americans having an appropriate good time? Was who? Were the Americans having an appropriate good time? They were tweeting. They weren't as like round up as us and the Italians. They were tweeting. They're, you know, they're very on top of their social media game in the U.S. So did you oh, know that Adarapan is almost, he almost has more followers on Instagram than Unikim at this point? I heard. And I saw Britney Spears tweet to him yesterday. And I, I mean, I kind of see it as much, like see it all as much as I can. And I think he's like relishing in this and loving it. And I mean, good for him. He's created this. Yes. It's funny because I go to work and people are talking about Adam Rapon. They're quoting everything. They, they thought they've never met a sassy gay person before. And I'm like, <laughs> it's been a few years, I guess, in the skating world. The, but you know what? He like backed up his talk by skating yeah. three clean programs here. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. I think that that's even more impressive. Of course. Yeah. Because he's so well, outspoken and then he did it. Well, one wonders in these moments where you, you identify with the skaters need to promote themselves and really put themselves out there to kind of create this, in a way, a brand so that something happens for them after the Olympics. But then we also wonder, as we've seen in the United States, we've seen it go both ways. And you wonder if sometimes a lot of the skaters who have been overhyped and over interviewed and over filmed in commercials and things like that, it often seems like such a deterrent from the training. And so I think a lot of us were very nervous for Adam. The more the hype, you know, and the more the media presence, there was a fear that 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 you couldn't possibly be training as well as you had. So do you find that when you're doing that kind of media stuff that it can take you out of the of the craft itself? Yes. But okay. I think Adam is is too smart to allow that to happen. I think Adam works really hard and I think that if the media needed him for something, let's just say at home from noon to eight, he would do all his training before noon. Mm -hmm. I really believe that Adam as a person would, would do that, just knowing him. Um, and that's a, when we've been, not that we were asked to really do that much. Nobody in Canada really cared about us this season coming into the Olympics. Damn. But um, for the small yes, things they, we asked to do, if they, they asked us to do something, okay. we always said it had to be after one o'clock in the afternoon so we could do our training day. Hmm. We, we never gave up a training day to do anything. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Now, did you see, yeah. speaking of media, did you see Ashley Wagner at the Olympics? I haven't. Okay. I've just seen her on Twitter, but I haven't actually seen, like, seen her, seen her. Adam hasn't seen her either. Um, I feel like that would be just a little bit hard to be at the Olympics. Yes. Doing like, some yeah, work with sponsors, but you're not actually competing here. I don't, yeah. I don't know if me as a person could have handled that. Did you see Michelle Kwan? Because she is there too. Oh, I want to see her. She's like my favorite. And I want to do yoga somewhere with her. Yes. You know, she is doing the yoga. She was doing yoga like outside on a boardwalk. And I thought. It I saw that. It looks so nice. I messaged her on Instagram. So maybe I'm going to get the opportunity to see her. I would like to see the two of you do yoga together before. Oh, we need to start like a yoga for a figure skaters program and maybe like a training video or YouTube channel or something. She does crazy. Like, but if you hang out, with Megan, you should but... maybe only wear your bronze and your silver. Don't wear the gold. Don't oh the yeah. Gold. I don't want to make her feel bad. Yeah. <laughs> if there was, if there was a team gold medal, Michelle Kwan would have like two of them. That's that absolutely been. right. That yeah. is absolutely false. There really? is no way the team. In USA... 2002, Sarah and her with Michael Weiss, and yeah. um, Yoko Ina and John Zimmerman. Our like, ice dancers were not that good back then. Russia would have had Sutskaya. They would have had Plashenko. They would have had Lobacheva. And they would have had Varishnaya. Megan, remember okay. your history. So maybe better. Michelle wouldn't have one. But you know what? Megan you would. know what? I have a little bit of like a, a problem when it comes to Olympic Games. I really like it really hurts me when people are upset with a silver or a bronze medal. Hmm. Like I I felt bad for Shui and Han. They really wanted the gold and they were they were disappointed. They were crying that they that they only had the silver. And I, I tried to explain to them like 
You have an Olympic silver medal. You are a champion. Mm -hmm. Any one of these medals is a champion. And um, it really hurts me when people look at like a silver or a bronze as a failure. They were like, oh, that's a nice Canadian girl. I I mean, I I feel like it's not. Hmm. They were, I know, but they will have, at least we'll get to see them skate for four more years now. And I said, like, you guys are going to win for sure in four years. Like, don't worry. Mm -hmm. Try to make them, like, feel better about it. But it's it's their first Olympics. Like, I feel like you don't want somebody to look at a silver medal and think that's a failure. I I don't want anybody to think like that. So she landed the sound. She'll want to think like that about her silver and bronze either. (laughs) Too soon. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> sweet though, she had landed the sow and then flipped out of it. At the, first, I thought that she had it, and then she for- didn't land like any triple sows in practice or warm up, though. Like, mm. that girl is a good competitor. So, yeah. what can they do? Can they do the quad sow throw? Like, have you seen them practice that? So, just an interesting story before I go into that. I love Shui and Han. They're like mm. two of my favorite um, skaters and people. Super nice. But um, so in Boston, we saw they finished first in the short program by a, a decent margin. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were in second. And then the day of the long, they were a mess. Like you never see Shui fall and throw triple flips. But in Boston, it was the first time in my life, an entire practice, she was falling on throw triple flips. And then the same thing happened here. So before the long program, um, Bruno was talking and he said, I don't think Shui and Han are going to do it. It's going to be the same as Boston. Mm-hmm. And even on the practice, like, she was falling and sliding like take into me on throw triple flips. And I was like, what's going on? Like this girl's like a machine with her throws. She doesn't miss them. So I think that the nerves and the pressure gets to them a little bit when they lead after the short program. Um, I'm also I, not into need, you need a second jump. You can't have a second jump. That's a risk. You need right, right. two reliable jumps. Right, um, right. And I think they probably could still do either a throw quad sour or a throw quad flip. I'm not sure if they train it or not, but I believe it's probably possible. She rotates so tight, and he he always has her placed so accurately on the takeoffs. I think it was the, the, I, think I like her hair flowy. You know, like I like her, short. I like her hair flowing in the wind, like yes. short but flowy. And there was like yeah. a Katie Lang situation going on with the hair in the yeah. wind, and I thought that was the difference. You know, and that I'm I'm a big fan of yeah. hand, but I think they hit. They hit it with the short program, program, concept, choreography, music. And I just think this was not a good idea to redo Toronto. I don't think it's their voice. I think it was their coach's voice. And I know that they want to honor him, but I just felt like it was not them. And that the bridge over troubled water last year was so good. They should have kept it. Like the skating fan in me was like, keep this program. It's amazing. Um, So I, I think that, they didn't make the right decision maybe with the program. I think that maybe could have been the difference even with the mistakes. Mm -hmm. And they always, they always lose levels. Mm -hmm. They always get the level one or two pair spin. They get a a level three lift randomly. Mm -hmm. Like they're always um, over the years when Eric and I have been very tight with them. Mm -hmm. I've always Mm -hmm. almost relied on the fact that when it gets to a long program, they won't get all their levels. Mm -hmm. And it happened here again. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's like, a lack of focus, but I know also, uh, for example, when you do a, the requirements to do a level four lift, mm-hmm. they're pretty easy. You need to grab your leg, go in one hand or turn the other direction. You know, it's not really that difficult, but some teams such as Shui and Han, they, they take all the hard risks with it and then they might miss letting go to one hand or switching positions soon enough. And then the level's gone. And this happens to them, them quite often. Now, does it bother you that he has short arms and that sometimes when they do the lifts, like, she is, like, inches from his head? <laughs> it looks a little funny. It does. It looks a little bit a little bit funny. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, there's nothing they can do about it. It's really impressive that he can quad twist her with those short little arms. I know. I like how Dylan worked around his bent arms by having Luba just dangle oh, over him. Oh, right around him. Yes. Yeah. Did Good enough disguise. <laughs> it, it worked, even though the judges yeah. knew that his arms were bent. As like, yeah. Yeah. They changed the rule about bent arms and lifts to something I'm not quite sure because mm-hmm. Eric has never bent his arms in the lifts, so we never paid much attention to that rule. Mm-hmm. But there was some sort of rule change to make it a little bit easier when the guy's arms are bent that they still get something. Now, Michael Shanley has an important question for you. He's not here, but he sends his love. 
He Tell wants to know what language is Bruno talking to the North Koreans? Because he said Bruno's English <laughs> is not fantastic. And that um, do they speak English? What is what is happening? Yes. Okay. They so there's the pair team and the coach, mm-hmm. and they don't speak English, but this man who works for the Federation, mm-hmm. um, and he's a translator, he speaks very good English. Okay. So we okay. communicate with him. And I was just coaching them on their practice, actually, um, trying to give – I tried to tell them that they need to get a three-jump combo, that mm-hmm. double toe is mm-hmm. 1.3 points. That could have been a 126-point long program for them. Mm-hmm. I said, like, that's very important. And um, a couple of details with their levels and stuff like that is they want to move forward to be able to fight for, for top 10 positions. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. we do speak to the man in English, and then he translates to the kids and the coaches in Korean. Okay. I'm so interested in them. I mean, obviously, there was a lot of fluff pieces and a lot of, you know, media hype about it. But mm. just in general, them as a pair, they do have very strong fundamentals, right? Which, uh, very good. And that, so this- yeah, how did that happen? That, that, and that's, that's the really intriguing part to me, because so much of that is developed, I would think, at such an early stage. And that short program choreography, like it's sharp and, and great. There, it's the coach who did it, and she did a very good job. Um, I tried to ask questions to them about their early time in skating. Like, why did they start skating? How did they start skating? Right. And I never got clear answers about that. But okay. the coach spent time in Russia when she was a skater. Okay. So she went to train with Russian coaches. Okay. And they watch a lot of videos, I think, from Chinese skating. Well, so do They're I. They're really inspired by the Chinese yeah. skating style and dynamic pair okay. skating. They do have a Suiyin Han, Shen and Zhao kind of quality to them, like a little magic, like a little... But they told us that, because they want to come back to Montreal as well to train, but we were told by this man that they have another pair team that will appear on the Junior Grand Prix. They're both single skaters. The boy does triple axel and quad, and the girl does all the triples. And they want them to be a pair team. So they will appear on the Junior Grand Prix, hopefully, this year. Will they also come to Montreal? They hope that they will, yes. Because I think you need to start coaching with something to do with your day. Oh, I, like, I'm coaching them now for the rest of the time here because they're training on the practice sessions for Worlds. And um, I hope that they're going to come back and we can, we can keep coaching them. They've invited us to their country as well to help coach. They always refer to it as our country oh. um, to help coach the skater. He said they have many skaters there. And um, Elaj Balde has gone to do shows, and he's, Elaj said that they have really good skaters, like very good. So, but we never. How does Elaj get? Like, only Dennis Rodman goes to North Korea. So, how does he? No, there's a skating show every February. Eric and I got invited two years ago, um, and we had to choose to go to four continents or to go there. And um, as amateurs, we made the decision to go to four continents. But um, every February, they do this big show. They call it a competition, but it's just a show. And Elaj has gone twice. And um, we asked um, Ari, who who works with Elaj, to get us to get us the contract for it. And Ari got us a contract. And so we're hoping next February we will go. Wait, Elaj is with Plushenko's amazing agent. Ari. Well, I don't know if he's like if he's with him or he just works with them sometimes. But yeah. Ari got Elaj the contract. So then we just. Pretty much Eric and I invited ourselves to the show. Ari is one of the staples for our viewers (laughs) of, like, amazing Russian skating people. Ari is one of the people who you have to meet. So, um, did you (laughs) see Plushenko at the Olympics? Was he there? Oh, is he here? I don't know. I can't tell. I like Plushenko. He's always really nice to us, and he loves that we do the quad, because we know that Plushenko loves quads. Yeah. Um, I I love Plushenko. I mean, I think he's hilarious. (laughs) Yes. Um, But I haven't seen I haven't seen, like, I've seen a lot of, um, like, the American ones that work as commentators, Paul Wiley, Scott Hamilton, but I haven't seen Sarah Hughes or Michelle Kwan. I haven't seen any. Hmm. I didn't see Maxim Trenkov or Tarasova or Plashenko. Hmm. So I, I guess I haven't seen very many people. <laughs> oh. So now let's talk about Jonathan's favorite pair, Vanessa James and Morgan Cypress. You've trained with them a bit when you've gone yes. down to Florida. To work with John Kerr. So what did John Kerr add to your skating? How are they doing? You know, talk us through this. Well, interesting. Um, Vanessa and Morgan also trained in Montreal with us for a long time. Years ago, they lived at my house for about five months um, before the World Championships in 2012. Mm -hmm. So I've known them for for quite a long time. Um, 
our plans with John Zimmerman were to go a lot more than we ended up going. We wanted to go to Florida on many occasions. Um, we did get to go for two weeks, but um, with this, we wanted to go back after Skate Canada before our second Grand Prix, which was Skate America. But during that time, they were in France for their Grand Prix. And then we had the Grand Prix final, and then they were gone to Europeans when we wanted to go again. So the, the timing didn't work for us to go as often as we wanted. Um, but the training center and the environment that John, Jeremy, and Sylvia have in uh, Tampa was really great. I mean, I really, I'm really sad that we couldn't go back more. Um, Vanessa and Morgan work really hard there with, um, with the three of them, with Sylvia, Jeremy, and John. And John Kerr is in, in Miami, but okay. he still like okay. works with them, but not at the same arena. Okay. Um, okay. They work really, really well together. They have a great program. They have a great facility. Everything is organized and a good energy. I found that John and Sylvia work very similarly to Bruno and Julie, like the same type of outlook on skating, the same energy, the same passion. So it was really easy for Eric and I to connect with them. Um, I think that we expected a bit more from Vanessa and Morgan here. Like we skating fans expected a bit more from Vanessa and Morgan yeah. Yeah. Uh, skating eyes here. I really liked their say something program. So I was a little sad to see that, that they went yeah. back. Yeah. I don't think that there was a big reason to go back. They were scoring well to say something. Mm -hmm. um, I I question a little bit. Um, they keep going for the throw quad and always plan for it to be on two feet. So I always wonder why people go for something planning a little bit of a mistake. Um, but that's not my strategy, so that has nothing to do with me. I enjoy watching them. I mean, I'm they engage me as a viewer, and I think that in the future, I hope they keep keep competing. I even think at the World Championships, they're going to be in a good mix for a medal this year. Mm -hmm. okay. You think they will continue? Is that your read on the situation? I, I would think so. I think they're only now starting to make ground and become pretty good competitors. So I think that, I think that they will. Mm -hmm. They're such an like they're such a appealing team to the audience, and uh, they're unique. And I think that they can keep coming up with creative programs, and that will be their their thing, you know, their creative, uh, entertaining program. And are they so, currently together? Because I always like to guess I never about... Know. Okay. I, no, we never know. It's a little confusing. <laughs> That's kind of the fun. It's like Tara and Danny. It's like, are they or aren't this week? It's it's kind yeah, of... Yeah, I don't know about those guys either. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, they seem to get along well mm -hmm. um, right now. So maybe they are together. I don't know. There was a funny like photo them. on Instagram. Like them, Jonathan is on top of it. He pretends to be nice, but... If Vanessa James is like, there was a picture from the village and she, he. There was, that's the one I sent to you. I was in, I was, the plot thickens. <laughs> oh wait, I might've saw the same photo. Tell me which one it is. He's in bed and she's yeah, I saw that photo in front of the too. bed taking a picture. She knew what yeah. she was doing. <laughs> yeah. And I know, I saw it and I was like, oh, maybe. Yeah. I mean, I try not to like question too much about people's private lives. Um, but but I know private. they're on again, off again sometimes. And okay. um. But as like skate, I like just in terms of skating, I, I really enjoy them. And I think that they have a lot to offer. And I mean, they can keep pushing the envelope. We know they can do that triple toe, triple toe combination if they keep working that quad and get it clean. And I, I think that they can do big things. So how is John Kerr as a choreographer? Because you worked with him. He's rising. Oh, I loved him. Okay. He came to Montreal to work with Julie on the short program. And they connected so well. <laughs> Excuse me. They they got along instantly, and it was amazing to be able to work with a male and a female choreographer. It really was helpful to us. Um, they have very similar vision, again, along the lines of, of John Zimmerman and Sylvia being similar to Bruno and Julie. John Kerr fit right into that um, synergy. And John John came to, Florida tw or to Montreal twice, and then we went to Florida to see him. He worked a lot on recreating the Muse program that we never ended up um, of, ended up doing here, but he did help us. Help us a lot just think of, of a different way of moving. And it was fun for me to get to, to do something with another guy. Because when Julie does the choreography, she can skate with Eric. Right. And then I'm like, I just see it. But I could participate more by skating with John. And I found that very, very helpful. And John's an amazing skater. Now tell us about your Russian friend who worked with the Terry Tudbaritsa and who told you all about that rink. Because... Oh, Yeah. So I've heard many things about Itteries. Ittery or Itteri? I think how do you it's say Itteri. It? Okay. Well, I've heard about her rink and how intense it is. And like, you need to audition to get in there. And the parents sleep outside, lining up at the door. Um, 
they get like tested every few weeks and if the skater is not good enough they're just kicked out and it's a very intense environment um but i don't know like then i read an interview with a terry where she was talking about paulina um tersh i never know how to say last name. but the silver. paulina who did really well at nhk and then sucked at skate america that one. Oh, the one with the the, yeah. the bone problem that one yeah I and love, I read an interview I where, yeah. <laughs> where Terry was saying something about, like, um, having to deal with her emotional side differently than she has to deal with the other skater's emotions and how sometimes she just spends a whole training session talking with Paulina. And I was like, oh, it just kind of showed a soft side to, to Terry that I didn't know maybe existed. She always seems so stern and focused and it scares me a little bit have you seen the documentary with her when her daughter has the 103 fever and she's like yelling at her (laughs) i and i've heard stories about when she was like touring and coaching she coached in the states for a while what happened there i don't know well i don't know i i've just heard that she was there Mm -hmm. and then there was something that happened in that city while she was there she was in oklahoma city bombing happened while she was there yeah Thought she was and touring. then she left after that. Yeah. yeah, she was touring. That's what it was. Yeah, There's... I don't know much about her as skaters. A lot of these Russian coaches, we don't know their background as skaters, but they become like manage. I think they're almost more managers. Mm-hmm. Like, see, I've heard that Elton John doesn't really coach; she manages. I heard that each she... of those teams has their own coach. And did you notice that when Kane and LeDuc went to Elton John, they they came back and they had like a horrific champs camp? Apparently, it was. Yeah. Maybe they hadn't been training the programs, though, because we know that the Russians don't train their programs Mm -hmm. beginning to end every day like we do. Yeah. I've heard that they do one run through a week. Odd. That would make me nervous. So. Oh, my gosh. Yes. So I've talked to skaters that trained in Russia and they said they were so nervous competing all the time because they never did run throughs at home. So they were like, we don't know what to do. So it seems like a Terry's kids do their run throughs. If you watch the documentary, they seem like they do. So Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if she's kind of taken a little bit of a different method mm-hmm. because there's no way they could do all that stuff in the second half so easily if they weren't trained. Did you see the recent one where Medvedeva, Med- Medvedeva and Zagitova are weighing themselves and then um, <laughs> and then um, Medvedeva is trying to do like a Ripon triple loop and she's messing up and Atari's telling her that she just doesn't care about working hard anymore now that she's won things. Oh. It's, it's so Makes good. Makes me wonder what they consider hard work. Oh, it was great. Um, it was excellent. But uh, <laughs> I recommend and this, this is an interesting point. Like, what, what motivates a skater, right? So, so many times we hear that the skaters are motivated by this kind of thing. Oh, you can't do it, I guess. Oh, you're not even trying hard, I guess. And then that motivates people. Like, you're saying... Um, a potential Russian clack in the audience ultimately makes you do even better because it That's inspires true. you to to conquer it. Um, I for sure am not that person. <laughs> I'd be like, if I had a coach or a teacher being like, you can't do this, you don't work hard enough, I'd be like, okay, I guess. Okay, bye. You know what I mean? Like, I, on the other hand, if I have someone encouraging me to do it and if I do this, it will be even better, that ultimately inspires me to do to do my greatest so i'm curious your take as someone we know who enjoys that like intense like aggressive approach to the training process and the way to thinking about this what ultimately motivates you in those things people that encourage or people that kind of give tough love i don't like it when people give tough love i can give that to myself see i can provide that side enough myself i like a team around me that's supportive and encouraging yeah Uh, for for myself and I think for most skaters you need a one member of your team that's kind of providing that motherly love and support for the emotional side okay. and for like just a pure like human being like we don't want these kids to grow up having messed up lives and being miserable because of skating because of a triple lutz or a triple loop triple toe or something like that mm-hmm. uh, but for myself I, I much prefer an encouraging environment and I've been very lucky that the last 10 years in Montreal that's what I've had Right. And um, and with all of us, and it's like almost a family. Like I know Bruno is my husband, but like in some ways, he might even be closer to Eric than he is to me. He's known Eric since and trained with Eric when Eric was fourteen years old, right. um, and and always take kind of like taking the time to to help Eric on a more emotional, supportive level. And I know that that's the way that that I know training to be is people that 
that react like that with us instead of that hard love. Like I've never been yelled at by a coach for ever. Yeah, your coaches and, didn't and, yell ever when I was in Montreal. It was never. It was... They never yell. And it, when I skated um, at the other rink with Richard in Montreal, like you didn't cry either. I remember the first day I went to Montreal, the the Polish team was still there, and Richard told me that when she started crying of a bad day, he made her sit in the penalty box and have a timeout. Like you, you are not dying. You're. This is just figure skating. You're here because you love skating, and that that's the approach to that to yeah, that rink yeah. that I was that I've been at, and um, and that's that's all I know, right? So I. I'm not too sure how I feel about coaches that are yelling and aggressive or I don't know if there is ones that hit or something like that. Cause I don't know that world. So now I've never the, seen- in Montreal, are the parents not allowed down by the ice? Because it, like when you go to the world arena, the crazy skating parents all sit in the bleachers and like you feel the vibe and there's like a, there's a tension there. The coaches don't really like each other. They pretend mm-hmm. to, but it's like very tense. Um, yeah. But in Montreal, the parents were like sitting up and then many weren't even there and, what was... Most of them aren't there unless there's like a kid that needs to be driven to school after, mm-hmm. right? Like, and sometimes there's one parent that kind of drives all the kids to school. Mm-hmm. So there's not many parents around at, at the rink in Montreal. Um, they're not welcome by the ice. There's not a rule, but it's like an unspoken rule that you're when you hire a coach, you trust the coach. Mm-hmm. That's right. really what it comes down to. If you want to be coached by somebody, then the coach does the coaching, not the parent. And the systems in Canada are just a little bit different. I think parents, just in general, with the Canadian skaters that I've ever known, are not really that intense compared to some of the stories I've heard about some American skating parents. <clears throat> but I don't. I've never. I've never really witnessed personally myself, so I don't know. So now let's talk about Aliona, her program. How are you feeling about her levels? I want to know. Like she didn't have to go for anything. So what is the secret? Yeah. Is it just the GOE that she is cleaning up with? How did she figure out this program to make it work so successfully? I think the program itself is like choreographed Mm -hmm. extremely brilliantly, almost to check the box of a perfect 10 pretty much in every category. Um, They do a very good job with the way that they've combined Bruno and Aliona. Like in this long program, he is just lifting her and twirling her the entire time. Mm -hmm. And he can do that. He's a strong tank, this guy. Like the strongest man I've ever seen and he literally spends four and a half minutes almost carrying her the entire time and and doing interesting intricate moves where he's always moving her around right and she becomes like this like a doll that he moves with and plays with and she looks beautiful as she does it so it's designed very very well um plus they they do hit all the GOE components on every element I there's not really any element they do where it doesn't really look nice. Now that she lands the throws on one foot, they cover good ice. Their music, like she, it's designed musically. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, they get all the hard stuff out of the way first. I guess like the composition mark maybe is the only one that's not absolutely perfect because they, they kind of go, I think twist, throw, jump, jump, throw. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then they, once all that's done, they can just sell it because they know that there's no other risk. Yeah, they had two minutes of just selling it, like all the yeah. components, just. And, that changes a lot. People like I don't know if people under realize the the stress that's released once the difficult elements are done, and then you can really just give everything you have to the program. Even if you're trying to give everything to the program, when there's an element that you are nervous about, it's it's impossible that you're going to be 110 percent committed to the choreography going into it. No. I mean, I love. I think that they were very brilliant. I think going back to this short program, this short's better than the original short they started the season with. Um, I mean, there was the unfortunate mistake in both short programs here, so we didn't see them do a perfect short, but I'm sure that that's her mission at Worlds. Mm-hmm. So now when Is you saw like- Tarasov and Morozov's free skate for the first time, that they, what was your reaction? Because you said you knew that you were in a, in a competition for metal with them. What yeah. was your reaction? Because they've had some music struggles in the past. They had that weird Lionel Richie a few years ago. It seems like they've really struggled with their style. Roman Zocoli, Roman Zocoli told me they were trying to get personality. When you saw this, what yeah. was your reaction as a competitor? <laughs> that. And you know what the worst thing, I, I think we saw it at Nebelhorn for the first time. And they scored higher components and beat Aliona and Bruno. And then I was like, oh my God, like bury me in a hole right now. I can't believe that that just happened. And Bruno was at Nebelhorn. 
and Bruno said that the word at the competition was what the heck is going on? Like, I mean, on, if you watch the short program, like Tarasov and Morozov really are the best team Mm -hmm. in every level, except for packaging of programs. Mm -hmm. I mean, their twist is the best. Their jumps are amazing when they're done. Their throws are amazing when they're done. They have nice lines. They have good speed. They have good flow. Um, when they do a program like their short program. And then you see, like, it was like, what the hell were they thinking? And then my first thought was like, well, they're never going to keep this program all season. Somebody is going to tell them to change it. Mm -hmm. And, but then I was like, but the judges just rewarded them with nines. So why would you change something when the judges are telling you it's good? Mm -hmm. And then the season continued. And I think the French skated really well at the Grand Prix, but Teresa and Marzov still beat them. And then again, it was like, what the heck is happening? Um, just because they are such a great team. They are an amazing team. And it's like, who thought of putting them in polka dots at the Olympics skating to Candyman? Who could have? And and who thought that that was a good idea for an Olympic medal moment? So are you to following me, Leslie Jones from Saturday Night Live? Are you following her on yeah, Twitter? I am. Yeah. She really She's loved so- that performance. She really had some thoughts about it. She, yeah. I just... I just wonder who heard that music and watched them skate it. So every time... He looks so uncomfortable as he does the choreography. And that's the thing. It's not like, okay, they did like a tchotchke program for fun. It was they look uncomfortable doing it. So that adds to it. I would read interviews where they said they enjoyed it. And I was like, okay, this is interesting. Do you see Elton bopping to it? They show her on the cam on this enhanced feed. I'm told, I'm not going to tell tell you who told us this, but I'm told that um, Elton slash Nina, uh, in the Paris Long program here at the Olympics, in that event, truly thinks Candyman was the best music out of all 16 teams. That tells you everything you need to know about that, that school and why she had junior teams for so long until Velocia and Trankov. Yeah. 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 And I mean... Whether I'm the competitor and I'm the one who won bronze or not, I'm sorry, but that program should not have had 74 for program components. No. It no. should have been ranked lower than Julian and Charlie, ranked lower than the Italians. Um, to me, that's that's unacceptable, and I would like answers as to... I would like, not even as part of a competitor in that mm-hmm. event, but mm-hmm. somebody who is passionate and interested mm-hmm. in the sport of pairs figure skating, mm-hmm. for somebody to explain to me those program component marks. How... Did they not fix her wedgie throughout the year either? It has gotten worse with yeah. every competition. Like, And when you're skating, that's annoying to the skater. Mm-hmm. So I wonder why, she, like, if it bothers her or not. It would bother me. Yeah, how could it I'm not? I'd probably kick it yeah. out in the middle of my program, to be honest. I'm that <laughs> not classy that I would do that. <laughs> <laughs> but it yeah. makes me uncomfortable watching it, and then I imagine how she must feel, and she must feel uncomfortable, unless she doesn't feel it. I don't know. So from a technical standpoint, what is it that makes their twist so good? I mean, it's it's been an interesting journey. Yeah. You had quad throws like all the time. I still am obsessed with that Instagram video of you doing the quad sow and turning around doing didn't you do a throw quad lutz like two seconds yeah. later in practice once? For goodness sake. Okay. Those were so, the days. Those were the days. <laughs> But so it's been an interesting journey. The twist maybe didn't come as naturally as some of the throws. And we've seen you develop that twist, like, to oh, where it is I now. I hate the triple twist. I hope I never do another triple twist again. I hate it. I, okay. My heart races when we take off for a triple twist. And I throw me for all the quads and I won't be nervous. But doing a triple twist makes my heart stop. So what is the what do you think the fundamental difference is between like, you know, even even Alexa and Chris who struggle yeah. in other aspects, that seems an element that they can rely on. So do you find that in just core matching situations that make those easier? Uh, we've studied and we've studied Alexa and Chris, Trasova and Bruno and Aliona's twist, the three that we, we believe That's are fantastic. the best twists in the yeah. world. We've studied them, we've analyzed them and they're they're all a little different on the takeoff in each way, but they're all the same in the positioning where the, the guy has the girl on the takeoff mm-hmm. and um, the explosion up. I think Bruno Massot is just pure strength. Like, he had a twist like that with Daria Popova. I don't know if you remember, but he had this ginormous twist with this girl who wasn't at Aliona's level. So I think that he just... And do you remember Chris Kinnearum did a quad twist with his junior partner? 
I like, did not remember States. Chris Kinnearum before Alexa. I really... I only remember because he was the junior boy in the States with a quad twist. Mm. So they have been taught a very good technique from a young age, first of all. And it's funny because a lot of people will think that because I'm so small and Eric is so big, he should be able to to throw me really high. But the problem is, is that Eric has to get down to my hips. And that's a longer distance then for him to come all the way back up. When you're closer in size, Kong Han has to go only like this. Eric right. has to go like all the way. So it, it takes a lot more time. And he's wasting his strength on the way up. Okay. So because of our size difference, it makes the twist harder as opposed to what people will think. Um, and also the fact that I don't think it's either of our most natural elements. Hmm. Um, I don't think that I'm patient enough on the twist. I think I want to do it all myself and I end up rolling into my rotation instead of waiting for Eric to get it all the way to the top. And I just, for all of Eric's amazing strengths, he doesn't have that brute explosiveness of Bruno Massot or Chris Kinnearum. Hmm. And um, we worked so hard. And I mean, there's still days where like we couldn't do a triple twist properly in training, even this year. And we, we really worked hard breaking down the double to the triple to, to make it our maximum. And we always knew that we were going in a short program in particular where we might gain something on the triple lutz. We're losing it on the twist. Mm. Um, we were always aware of that. And we, we tried to get the level four by adding steps. But the more we added steps, the worse the twist itself got. Okay. So we would miss the catch or we would miss the split and we would miss the GOE. Mm. So the twist is like so unnatural. And I think that first year at Worlds when... I didn't get enough height, and then I, I hit Eric in the face because I, I finished rotating too close to him. I didn't have, have enough height to do it. Um, I think that, like, damaged us mentally on the triple twist. Mm. Like, it always – it created a little bit of stress and nerves about the twist. Okay. Another but, little – yeah, keep going. Yeah. I'm, no, I was just going to say, I just – it's interesting because we've talked a lot about this with the Canadian pairs. Why, why does nobody – why do none of the Canadian pairs have that type of – amazing explosive twist that some of these these other teams do and um i mean bruno has hired biomechanic uh people and watched videos and trying to break it down and maybe it's something innate that's just in you i don't know yeah you could go to delilah and learn it you know yeah yeah we could we could have another <laughs> we tried to make the most of of our twist and i mean for all the things that we did here like it makes me proud that in all four programs we did a nice solid triple twist mm -hmm. that looked effortless and looked strong. Like it didn't look silly compared to the others. Now talk to me about some, sometimes when we were looking at various great throws, obviously, which you guys are total masters at. Like some, some guys are really hurling themselves. <laughs> and it's, as a viewer, at times it's very exciting to see the guy lift his like free leg up and flail and just look <laughs> like he's about to just oh, fall. Dang. And then there are others that are just calm and collected and let it go. So I was curious, your, I mean, aesthetically, the, the one where the man seems a little out of control in the throw um, jars it visually, but kind of can create an exciting result. So I was curious if that was even something you noticed or something you one would like aim for to be more still or to be a little bit more bombastic. So there's, everybody's technique on throws, um, especially I think from like skating groups, like the Chinese all have the same technique, mm -hmm. but they all hold a throw takeoff holding the girl's waist. Mm -hmm. That's right. the technique right. that they use. Eric and I use him holding one of my wrists. Do the mohawk into the wrist grab. Yes. And the reason we do that is because it makes the sow be my own jump. I get to use my right side. If Eric was holding my hips, it's not my own jump anymore. You're completely so, reliant. Okay. Yeah. We want the, the throws to feel like my own jumps because that's how I learned throws. I, when I learned, like, I was playing around with pairs one day and I was like, throw me. I want to try to throw triple Lutz. And I kind of just did my own Lutz and my, my partner at the time assisted me. And so that's the way I learned to do throws. Okay. And especially when we're doing a throw quad and what we, we realized this season as we analyzed the terrible quads we did at the Grand Prix final and nationals where I, like, almost killed myself you notice that they explode up and down and they look like quads. It looks like, oh my God, like that something big happened. Mm. And as we analyzed our throw quad, we, we realized the ones we land the best in practice look like a triple. It doesn't look like any extra effort. 
And those are always the ones that are cleanly landed. So it became our focus coming here to make never to have a quad that looks like a quad, always to have it look triply. Mm. Um, but everybody's technique is different. Like I think that the Chinese can only do the throw where it's completely the man that's in control. Like that guy is chucking her and she is like, good luck. <laughs> but uh, it's not, it's also not Eric and I's way of skating. And Eric is always the type of partner that he wants to give me the best chance to land the throw. So if that means slowing down and be careful, we do that because he wants to make sure that I have the best chance and the best safety of landing it. And that's, that's kind of, we've tried to work out of that. Like, okay, we need to go in with more speed. We need to cover more ice. We really worked on making the throw triple lutz a little bit bigger. But then when we worked on making it bigger a few years ago, I couldn't land it cleanly anymore. So it was like, do we go for bigger, but dropping that left foot on the landing? Or do we go for a smoother, cleaner landing? So that was kind of our... And it's interesting, like you're saying, in, in the Chinese pairs, like, because so many of their um, pairs girls at this Olympics had some real problems on their solo jumps. Mm -hmm. But like you're saying, the men are really just like, here you go, I'm just going to chuck you and I just hope you figure it out. <laughs> and, and That's then, what it feels like sometimes. And, and oftentimes they, they are figuring it out on those landings. So it's so intriguing to me if you, especially with your technical knowledge and hopefully a big coaching future, like if you if you see someone, these girls that can land these these throws out of really nowhere, oftentimes, yeah. like they're landing things they really shouldn't be landing. How do you transfer that into the solo jumps? That's like the mystery to me. So I have always wondered why these girls that can rotate a twist and land throws, why can't they just land a jump on their own? I feel like it's. It is a big mystery, a uh, big mystery for me. It shows you that it's the man doing a large part of the throw. Mm, okay. Um, and I, I really wonder, especially with these the Chinese teams more particularly, they all have one jump they can do, the mm. triple toe. They all struggle with a second jump. And I wonder if it's because they've ignored that aspect as the skater was younger. They didn't develop this skill before bringing them to pairs and only focusing on pairs skills. <laughs> Okay. But you'll also notice if you watch practices at competitions, especially I'm using this as an example, even though I love all the Chinese teams on practice, they don't practice that second jump. It's mm -hmm. almost like they just ignore it. Uh, I, I rarely see the Chinese practicing their side by side triple cell, any of those teams okay. at the end, like two minutes left in practice. They might, they might try one. Okay. They don't okay. spend a lot of time practicing it. So then I wonder if when they're at home, do they ignore it as well? Or do they work on it a lot at home, but they don't want to showcase it because it's kind of a weakness? So at competition practice, they try not to do it. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't know how I that works. I feel like if you hide your weakness, you that becomes like a bigger weakness in your head. To me, it would mess me up. Like yeah. I need to be, I'm very type A where I have to do every single thing every single time. Yeah, I don't know. Me too. And we have like 30 minute practices here and we were trying to manage our energy between like competing a million times in one week. Um, so we would only do one practice, but the practice sessions are only 30 minutes. And then there's Bruno is saying we're doing one practice, nice and easy. And then I was like, we need to do everything in 30 minutes, though. We need to do the lutz, the sauto toe, the throw quad, the throw lutz, all the lifts and a triple twist and our spins all in this 30 minutes. So it would become like a little bit like of a panic. Like, I don't want to get off that practice session until everything was done. But because we were practicing really well, we weren't missing anything. So things got done quickly. But um, I'm very much like you that I wouldn't want to get off. I won't leave a day at the rink until we've done every single thing. Well, it's no wonder you don't need tough love from a coach. <laughs> <laughs> it will eat, like it'll eat away at me if on a Friday I leave the rink and maybe we didn't do a perfectly clean throw quad that day. And I'm like, I have to wait till Monday now. And I, I think about it for two full days. When I do yoga videos, I will pay attention to which side of my, which parts of my body I'm getting through so if in a week i don't yeah. hit everything like numerous it bothers me so yeah it has to be a balance <laughs> the ocd in us as well i think yeah um so i was wondering what you think about julianne and charlie because they don't always go for the hardest lifts you know that they could maximize their points but they do just have this harmony when they skate really well they Sometimes they have really great music. Originally, I wasn't into this music that they're skating to this year. And then it just, like, 
really the long got, program yes and then i was like do i need to up my medication like this is a really depressing song <laughs> and then about all bleeding the same so what is it like what is their magic in your mind because you always say like on Air? paper kmt should beat them because she goes for the higher points they should be yeah. yeah they have they have a synergy between them it's like they are two skating as one mm-hmm. julianne and charlie um I don't know if that's something that can be trained or it's something that it's like they are the perfect match for each other. Mm-hmm. I really like their long program music. I found my, I added it on my Spotify playlist and I would listen to it when I was stretching or at yoga or making my dinner. And I, then I would think about them and I would go through their program in my head because I'm weird and I'm like that with my competitors. <laughs> and um, I, I think that Julian and Charlie are well trained and well prepared for events when they're healthy, like when they're not suffering from injuries coach of Um, course i mean oh my god i think that they sometimes they're just a little bit like they added that hard lift now the reverse Mm -hmm. lasso they added it this year and it's beautiful Mm -hmm. and it's a whole point more than the lift that they were doing for the last years Mm -hmm. and now i think like strategically point wise it's Mm -hmm. to add another double toe to their combo Mm -hmm. um they can both do the harder jumps too they can both land beautiful triple lutzes and triple loops so maybe they will be incorporating stuff like that into their skating but I think that their priority will be staying healthy more than anything so that they don't miss like seasons or parts of the season. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like when I watch Julianne and Charlie, you just want to sit and smile. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like they just, they kind of bring that to you. It's like, oh, like they look nice. It's pleasant. It's beautiful. They're, they move like um, seamlessly. They move together. Their unison is great. Um, and she reminds me like a little bit, she skates a little bit, like, I think like, like, in a lot of ways, like I used to, um, earlier in my career, mm. we have similar bodies, similar, um, style, similar, like difficulty with having big lines because you have these short little legs. So I feel like you know, she reminds me a little bit of myself. Does Daleman remind you of yourself? If I was a single skater, I'd probably skate like Gabby Dalman. Is that similarly. from Lee Burkell? With, with the worst triple toe, triple toe, because she doesn't, I wouldn't be able to match that. Is that the <laughs> Lee Burkell part that you both skated with Lee, that you're similar? How does that, or is that? I think she was like that though, before she went to Lee. Mm-hmm. I think like when you're given a body that you're given, like, and you just work with it, like that's her strength. She's strong and she's powerful and she's explosive. Mm-hmm. And if I was a single skater, I would probably skate with that same power and explosion and like, all out and in your face. I mean, I think that she's more refined than I would be if I was a single skater, but she's worked really hard to be able to do that. Mm. Now, Valentina. Oh, the, she was great. Yes. But do you like, think she is shortchanging herself by not having her sexy programs? Because we saw her in the last Olympics when she did that Naya program. Remember what she did at the last Olympics. She stood at center ice and like, just like she was in black with these red lips and just like, stared at the judges for the first yeah. like 20 seconds and it was amazing and she like worked her skirt and she was just like very italian and i mean maybe there would be problems in andre's marriage if she did this but i'm getting very <laughs> sick of their fellini programs the whole like light comedy dell'arte kind but of it's thing. What they do well so they were smart with knowing what their strength was like going back to this long program again like so many people did this year going back to programs um I'm not sure they could do something else. Oh, she could so do well. it. Lipstick on his collar, like I don't know, makeup on the neck. Like I think, like, but maybe that would distract her from the focus she needs for for the pair elements. I don't know. We'll I feel like her. this, like their short program and their long program that they did here, like this style. It's it's just them. When I think of Valentina, that's what I think of. When I think of Andre, that's what I think of. And I mean, they they came here really prepared. Like I thought, Eric and I were the most prepared team coming here but like they were also very very prepared um and sharp like that girl like she nails those throws every time like no hesitation it's like boom here i am and it's impressive i I, that they if they chose to keep going i would be the strong advocate of still going for that triple lutz in the short program Mm -hmm. because i feel like you need something to make you stand out Mm -hmm. you always need something to make you stand out and for three years when eric and i started we didn't really ever land the triple odds for the first few years. And many people told our team, why are they trying that? That's stupid. They should just do a triple toe. And Bruno would tell them one day they'll be champions because of this triple odds. And you, we, you know, we had to go through it, missing it for many years. But once you got it, it was there. Like it helped us. And I feel like Valentina, if they were to choose to keep competing, they have to, 
to go down that road with separating themselves somehow because there's just too many great skaters like all clumped together and you need something to separate yourself in the way that I would encourage Julian and Charlie to to maybe incorporate one harder jump that because they can into their short program and maybe going through a year where you miss it but so it will pay off for you in the long run now how would you contrast the two Italian teams well, have oh, you so seen good. him? We've seen his modeling photos. I had Sandra Bezik Google image his does model. Does he still? He doesn't post them really that much anymore, though, does he? No, but you can search them, dear. You can search them. <laughs> Sandra wasn't aware of that, and I had her look. She's a very big girl crush on you, by the way. I don't know if you knew oh, that, but she's she very... Tweets to us. Every time she tweets, I feel so special. <laughs> she's very nice. I love Sandra. Mm-hmm. Um, I like Nicole and Macchio, and we need to remember how little time he has spent figure skating. Do you remember when he first came from roller skating to figure skating and like he was skating on a straight line and he couldn't do a crossover like he that boy has come a long, long way. Yeah. And uh, see, whereas Valentina and Andre did the same style for the short and long. So did Nicole and Macho, just a completely different style that I'm personally not drawn to. Um, it no, I did see something me. in between those two things for both of them. Actually. Yeah. 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 I feel like Nicole and Macho should spice things up somehow, but I don't Different really know. Different costumes, how. at least. Like the roller skating glittery onesies, like it just looks so dated to me. Their qualities when they do them, though, are, are top notch. Mm-hmm. Like when they execute things. And I think that, again, should they choose, I don't know what people's plans are, but should they choose to keep competing? Just something to spice them up, like a complete new look that when you look at them, you're like, who are they? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. I feel like that could open people's eyes to them in a new way. Mm-hmm. With the exact same skating they do now because they're beautiful skaters. And when I watch them do stroking exercises on practice sessions, um, they have beautiful edges and great unison. So you got to watch a lot of the skating. So I want to ask off the cuff, who's weighing the ladies, Medvedeva or Zagitova? I haven't seen um, many ladies' practices, but I think that Zagitova will win because... Um, she has a higher base value. I and I like to play the mathematical game. Her jumps are also uh, amazing. They're like unreal. Yeah. And I feel like Medeva like might miss that double axel in the short or something. Mm-hmm. Her double axel scares me a little bit. But then the judges give it plus threes. And I'm like, what? Am I the only one scared? <laughs> uh, <laughs> she drags like- her leg on the takeoff sometimes. You know, like it's- Have you noticed that all these amazing, amazing Russian girls with these crazy jumps... They all kind of have weak double axles. You don't see very many of them with good double axle. No. It's Only what? He has a good one. Oh, it's she, rare. Yeah. And but she sticks out as a result. She's like the only one. Yeah. 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 Hmm. So I but I think that Zagitova, Zagitova, Elena, whatever, however you say her name with the tutu. She is <laughs> if she does her stuff, she just gets more points. Yeah. And she they play the system. See, I hear a lot of comments like, I don't particularly like waiting two and a half minutes for them to start their spectacular jumps. But it's, but not, it's not their the fault. Rules. Yeah, exactly. They're just, they're playing the game and in the same way that we all just try to play the game. Right. Now in so, ice dance, are Tessa and Scott going to do it or is it going to be the French? This is going to be quite the battle. I know. I don't, I don't know if somebody can say what, what is going to happen. I mean, it's like comparing apples to oranges. Have you They're seen both DDA at the Olympics? Because that might be the key. Have you seen DDA the what? guy? Have you seen DDA guy gay around? Oh, the... No, I don't like. I, he makes me scared. I don't really want to see him. He should. Yeah. And he has a lot of power. And I remember a few years ago when Tessa and Scott came back, he did an interview, and he said, um, "The French dance team will win the Olympics in Pyeongchang. We will do whatever it takes, and they will win." And then it made me scared because I was like, "He will make sure that they do," <laughs> in in some scary ways. Um, We've been paying attention to the judges. I've been working on some projects. And there are a lot of judges that have histories of voting with France votes with Russia, traditionally, through all the time. Also, speaking of panels, Mm -hmm. interesting tidbit. Remember the video that went around with um, Golden Skate? uh, Golden Spin? Golden Spin competition with the judging. And how there was two judges cheating, but only one of them was being investigated. The Russian wasn't. The others on judging here at the Olympics, you know? Interesting. Interesting. I was told. This is what I was told. I don't know if it's true, but I was told that they are. And isn't that interesting, eh? One of the things that I heard is that you did side-by-side triple Lutzes, and throughout your careers at some moment, because your competitors, you were competing with the Russians, 
And somehow the value of the toe and the sow got added, but the Lutz stayed the same. And at the time that went through, it seemed just like, oh, they're raising values, changing things. But that really would make kind of cut into your competitive advantage. Is that true? Of course. Every rule that they make, we wonder if it, over for a period of time, if it was because of um, something we were doing. And, and after we won our first world title, um, so for the 2015, 2016 season, they increased the base value of the triple sa- of sow cow and toe loop, but they didn't increase the loop flipper Lutz. So all it did was make the sow and toe worth uh, almost even, like not even, but bring it closer to the loop flipper Lutz. But the loop flip and Lutz all remained more difficult elements, but they didn't increase them as well. So this was a very interesting thing that happened. Um, I'm more outspoken about it, but Eric actually went to a lot of people um, with the ISU and officials asking them to explain to him why this was done. And we have never been given a reason as to why this change got put in. And then didn't Stoblova do the triple toe, triple toe as her first element? That when season you were... is when Stoblova started doing the triple toe, triple toe, yes. And it would often be cheated, the second jump. I was just going to say. Counted clean. So It was often like two duck faces under, yeah. and it got counted as clean with plus Joey. Just... Who knows? Just, I mean, we've also heard through the grapevine that they want to make throw quads worth less because they're dangerous. But I'd like to know who's who's deciding if it's dangerous. Because if I've been doing it for four years and I've never once been injured by it, how is it dangerous? Right, of course. And I think it should be up to the skater to decide. Like, it would be extremely dangerous for Eric and I to do a quad twist. I mean, we'd probably kill ourselves. So we don't try it. But it's, it's not dangerous. dangerous. For it's others, that's why it's worth more. <laughs> like, yeah. That is why, and it's, it's more difficult more. for other people. So of course they should, yeah. yeah, they should be able to receive um, credit for doing something impossibly difficult. And if you, I'm going like off on a rant now. Yeah, if you do. look at the the point system, two lifts Eric and I do in our long program that are not difficult. I mean, we do one lift where I just grab my leg, and one lift, um, an axle lasso where we change positions and do a little exit, but. By no means are they crazily difficult, but both lifts receive more points than a throw quad or than some quad twists that were done. But I know novice teams that do those exact lifts. Mm. So when I look at that sheet, it, it almost makes me laugh when I see these two lifts that we can do blindfolded with our eyes closed um, receive more points than some people's quad twists and a cleanly landed quad sow. Yeah. But People, it's because people think a lot of times like Megan and Eric win because of their triple lets or their quad sow. And then it makes me laugh because one year, um, our first world title, five or six teams throw triple sows scored more than our throw quad. And we were like, no, actually, we would have won by more if we just did a throw triple. Interesting. So this system doesn't make sense sometimes if you really break it down and analyze it. Well, speaking of lifts, Belinda from Australia loves your lifts. She loves the flow over the ice and the distance. So I thought that would make you very happy because That's nice. Eric covers a lot of ice and he has very quiet feet. Um, if you notice, Eric doesn't have snow flying up from his feet as he uh, as he does that. And it always sometimes it makes me wonder because we see some some Russians and Chinese that kind of go from blue line to red line on their lift. But um, even the, the pre novice and novice teams in Canada and the U.S. they all go corner to corner. We're all taught that ice coverage is very important on lifts, but I'm not sure if it's considered important everywhere in the world or just in the U S and in Canada. Sometimes they focus on position rather than the, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, it's very different. And I mean, you can break down like so many different facets and points and I don't know what the judges are looking for. Sometimes we've asked them sometimes, like for example, we've done a death spiral and said, what, what would you award this? And then, our feedback uh, judge will tell us, oh, yeah, it's a nice plus two. And then Eric and I say, what can we do to make it a plus three? And we've gotten the response of, hmm, I'm not sure. One time a judge told us that. And I was like, well, if you didn't think it was perfect, you should be able to tell me why it wasn't perfect. Why? Why? Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Yeah. So I think yeah. sometimes the judges don't even know. Right. I don't know. I find there's been so many instances where it's like, like you, you just leave scratching your head. Uh, so another question I have always wondered. So doping, I know that you have to write down what you take, like anything in your body. So if I would have like one medication to write down and like a multivitamin, what is the most you've ever seen another athlete write down for doping? Pages. Page. Front and back of a page. Really? Oh my gosh, yes. Like, because you go in the doping room and usually like you could be many people in there at one time filling out your paperwork. 
and then waiting for the bathroom because there's usually only one bathroom so you have to wait your turn um and i've seen front and back of a page listed and then there's me and i'm like i took vitamin c and calcium and magnesium and <laughs> you know like that's it <laughs> um, <Ale>. yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah we've seen uh, many many times a full front and a full back of a page same countries yes usually from two particular countries yes interesting interesting and we were i was drug tested twice here in one week and you know what is interesting when i'm drug tested the the last few times and like i know that i have nothing but literally vitamins in me um i get nervous as i'm sealing up that bottle i'm nervous like Energy. oh my god where's yeah. this bottle going who's going to touch this bottle what's going to happen with this I, I feel like I question myself, even though I know that I have absolutely no reason to question myself yeah. just because of everything that's been going on. It makes me nervous. Like these bottles are supposed to not be able to open, but apparently they were open. So I'm like, where, where's this lab? Who's going to open it? And then we had to do blood doping here for the very first time. I've never done doping through blood work, but I did here. So everyone had to do it or just medalists? We're selected. Oh. So like they came to my door the day I got here. Um, they came to the door to take me for doping. And do they come at weird times or is it like a, an appropriate time? Yeah. Um, well, the Italian dancer missed her practice one day because they wouldn't let her leave the doping station and go to practice, which is not allowed. So they got in a little bit of trouble for that. Yeah. Um, Caitlin Weaver almost missed a practice as well, but she did manage to get there. Hmm. Um, it's a little bit disorganized and chaotic. like Because normally when you go to events, you're tested after. But when we come to the Olympics, they get you before and after. So it's a little bit of a different system than we're used to. But um, we got tested. Eric got tested after the team event, and then it was me after the pairs event. They go one or the other. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Because that explains, because there were a lot of questions at the McLaren report. If both athletes are doping, why is only one showing up on there? So if they alternate it, that could be... Yeah, you don't both get doped. Like, it's one or the other. At nationals, it was me and not Eric. At the Grand Prix final, it was him but not me. It goes. It's okay. supposed to be random. Do you get very comfortable usually, with the people that watch you? Like, if they come to your house so often, you're like, you've watched me pee a lot, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> when they come to my house, one time the power was out and we had to do a, a doping by candlelight. It was romantic. No. That sounds beautiful. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they know my dogs and they play with my dogs and I know them by name now. And I mean, they're just doing their job. They're sent a list of this is who you go see today. Um, but I mean, it's never perfectly comfortable when like you have to take off all your clothes and somebody watches you pee. Like, how could that be comfortable for anybody? Wait, and then you, you get to strip down to completely feel... naked. Like to like, yeah. Do... Like you have to like have like from your, your chest down. Oh wow. Okay. So that they can see that you're not doing anything. And um, you have to fill 90 milliliters. So sometimes you pee, but you only fill 50 milliliters and then it's a partial. So you seal it all up as a partial, and then they continue following you around until you need to pee more. Fascinating. Yeah. I'm into this. They've driven in the car with me to the rink from my house because I, oftentimes I'm diluted because I, I just drink too much water and I'm so hydrated, but it can't be tested if it's diluted. So they have to stay with you till you can provide them another sample. This happens a lot. So they'll, you know, they can't leave, you can't leave their site. So I'm, I have to go about my day and they follow me until I can provide them with a clean sample. Uh, can Carolina just answer the door for you and tell them you're not there? <laughs> well, what was funny, um, here at the Olympics, I'm rooming with coaches here. And I was rooming with Jose, who's Julianne and Charlie's coach. And she answered the door and she saw the lady with the doping tag. But the, the doping officials aren't allowed to say who they're coming for. So they told Jose who's in this room. And then Jose said, well, who do you want? Like just kind of playing with them. She knew I was the only skater in the room. Of course, I they were coming. I would be terrified of her if some if she asked me a question like and that. <laughs> they kept saying, "They kept saying you have to tell us who's in this room." And then Jose was like, "Well, I'm in the room, and Bruno's in the room, and like she was naming everybody." And then she's like, "So who do you need?" And then eventually, I was laughing so hard, and I just came out, and I was like, "I'm like, here to pay for my doping." <laughs> So now your husband was texting me last night during the men wanting updates. He told me that coaches can't stay. In... Yeah, I got kicked out. So did Jose get kicked and my out too? Died, so I had to stop asking him. And then he told me, he didn't say Dave. He said, I was messaging TSL for updates. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> my phone had died um, in the venue. But uh, the day after the, the event is finished, at least for Canada, your coach is sent home. So do you have a, the room to yourself now that there's no Bruno, no Jose? Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm with Mary France and Patrice. Oh. And uh, physio, a physio now came and took Jose's room. Okay. So our apartment is still full. Okay, nice. So we're having fun. We did puzzles. <laughs> is Marie France going to sweep the dance event? Does she seem nervous at all? I mean, that's a possibility that they really could. Yeah. Um, I want them to so badly. <laughs> yeah. They were like they seem pretty relaxed, but the dance starts tomorrow, so maybe they're going to start getting a little bit. Yeah. A little How long does it take her to do that hair of hers? Because it was looking amazing on TV. It looks perfect when she wakes up in the morning, so I have no idea. I think it's just <laughs> all the time. <laughs> I don't think there's anything else to it. <laughs> have you seen her eat? Fun. I've never seen her eat before. I don't. I never thought about it. I don't think so. Just like not that. Like, but I mean, we don't sit in the room and eat. Like you go to the cafeteria, and my schedule is not the same as them, so I don't often see the the dance people at the cafeteria. Hmm. But we have like, we have the cafeteria that has twenty four hour McDonald's and and food. Yo, that's why not do really... they have that for the Olympic athletes? Who's eating the McDonald's? Well, you it's different food. would be surprised of all the people that eat the McDonald's. I mean, we get co- it's nice because they have the Mick Cafe, so we have coffee. Mm-hmm. But um, other than that, I I mean, people shouldn't be eating it, but they are. <laughs> Especially <laughs> as people finish competing, you start seeing more and more people eating McDonald's, and then you realize that they're done their events. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so which events are you going to try to see? I want to see you at the luge. You know, I'm very into the luge. You know what? I saw bobsled in Sochi, and as cool as bobsled or luge or skeleton is, when you watch it, you only see like one second. That's right. And then they're gone. And then you're like, okay, like I'm going to go down the track and watch them from a different corner. Hmm. But it, you just, they fly so fast, and it's like you blink and they're gone. And it's right. a long way to get up the mountain. It's like a 45 minute bus ride. Hmm. Have you tried the half pipe? Different. I like those. I like the, the half pipe <laughs> seems like you could see a lot, right? Yeah, ski jumping. Ski jumping oh. is cool. I could see you doing that. Now, your Pilates teacher, Leslie Angelis, was a former gym dog of, like, my favorite coach. Really? Yeah. So, like, this coach and I may talk strategy on the phone. Um, <laughs> Gymnastic strategy? Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. So okay. you need to get us a lot of Suzanne stories from Leslie because she is a character with no filter. You know, just... Suzanne. Or yeah. Leslie is. No, Suzanne is. So Leslie okay. will have time. When I get home, I'll have to ask her. Yeah. I don't hear much about Leslie's like gymnastics background because more I hear about her Cirque du Soleil because okay. she was in Cirque du Soleil. Yeah, you need okay. to ask her about her college experience. She went to Georgia and yeah, is... I did yeah. know that. Yeah. Interesting. I don't know so what year she graduated. Everybody connected, eh? She may have been on one of the teams that like never won a team title where there was like only a few ever and that would like eat at you for the rest of your life. So, oh. yeah. Oh boy. I know that a few people went like went on the Olympic team that Leslie did gymnastics with. Yes. I yes. don't know exactly who though. I wasn't like as hardcore like following gymnastics in, in that time, probably in the nineties as I kind of follow now. Yeah. So now yes. what are you going to do for the rest of the week? Are you going to closing ceremonies? I'm Just... going crazy. Oh, shit. Like my Fitbit is like, not reaching my goals the last few days because I've been what sitting in the room. What is your Fitbit watching. goal? Oh, I'm. It's modest. I just want ten thousand steps a day, two thousand calories. Do we still compete? Let me look at. If are we still? Connected? Maybe. <laughs> How are and my? I wear skate, but then when I'm at competition, mm-hmm. I don't compete with it on, and my wrist feels naked. It scares me. When we oh. do death spirals in practice, Eric like gets a hold and kind of holds my my watch. And then when we do a death spiral in competition, I'm not wearing my watch. I always feel like a little weird. <laughs> it's missing. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, I will say, Megan Duhamel, 87,759 this week. And what are you at? 95,500. Oh, <laughs> That's okay. I'll take it because I've been sitting in a lot of rings. Mm. Um, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm helping. I'm coaching the North Korean team every day on those pair sessions. We'll have the gala to do, so we do need to skate a little bit before the gala. Um, I have no idea what else I'm planning to do. Like a part of me wishes that I went home and saw my dogs, like as Bruno went home. But then the other part of me is like, you might never be at an Olympics again. So I want to stay here and, right. and try to, I want to see, um, the team pursuit, long track speed skating, the one where they go as a team. Apparently it's interesting. Hmm. And I want to see the ice dance and I want to see the ladies. Today's a bit boring because there's no skating event. Like right. I'm going to go and watch every Maybe not all the ice dancers, but I will watch the entire ladies short and long program. Okay. I'll sit through those early groups and I'll be the supporter of all of them. 
So after you win the team gold medal, does everyone feel less stressed out? Like, do you feel pretty good? Like you... Like, we felt less stressed, but you still have goals of what you want to accomplish. Tessa and Scott and Caitlin and Gabby left and went to Seoul. Mm -hmm. um, there was a training site in Seoul that Skate Canada got. So they got to almost, like, go away and come back, and now it's a brand new competition. Mm -hmm. Us and Patrick didn't do that. We had to stay here. And Eric and I only had two days. Um, so it was really exciting, but, I mean, we expected. We didn't, we didn't like, 100% expect to win, but we knew it was possible. So it's not like it was, like, this surprise. Um, but everybody had their own goals for their individual events. And we knew that we knew how strong the pairs field was here. So we couldn't really relax because we needed to be better. Like we said that when we scored 148 in the long in the team event, and we assumed that we needed at least 148 or more to medal in the pairs event. And it was about that, that we needed. Um, I don't know if Patrick felt more relaxed or not because I didn't really talk to him about that. Did you march so in the ceremonies? Yeah, I did. Okay. You could walk and then leave. You didn't have to stay and sit and watch the show in the freezing cold because the ceremonies was in Pyeongchang, which is more up north, and it was freezing. Mm. So we walked in, we like waved, said hello, and then we left on the bus to come back to the village. And was that taxing? Because there's always that debate. Is that is that going to tire you? Oh. Or you're like you had to be sitting in like a holding room for almost two hours before as they organize each country, and then like Canada went like a little bit later, so we were sitting in this room forever, but. I brought like snacks in my pockets and we all just sat in the ground and chilled. So like that part was a bit boring waiting to go in, but it wasn't taxing at all. Like I, n I never understand why people choose not to do it. If you were sitting out in the cold for hours, like, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I would think that would be like, but the bus is, like by the time we walked in, we went around the stadium. I was on a bus five minutes later hmm. coming back to my, my village. Did you meet the so oiled up guy from the Tongo? I, I saw him. Yeah. He was, was he taking cold? pictures with everybody. Was he freezing? So he was, he was like all bundled up, and then as soon as it was time to walk out, he took off his his stuff. Okay. So he was only like that for the ten minutes it took to walk. Yeah. But he must have been freezing. There was interesting outfits, like a lot of interesting, nice costumes. The U.S. team had like heat a uh, heating system inside their jackets, like their jackets had a uh, heat like heating sack that was that turned on. Hmm. Like that's freaking cool. Like, Ralph Lauren really went all out for that. Now, so that as excited as I was to see Kim Yuna light the torch, if you were going to come back, would you have wanted to do more than a one-foot spin? I know that she was high up. How would she would have fallen off the cliff. No, there, no that, would not, that is fake news, okay? Also, they had a rink down below. I wish that she, like, Ina Bowered, and then they lifted her up to light the torch. Did she fake the bower? I saw an interview where she said she was so scared to fall that yeah. she didn't want to do anything because she was really scared to fall. Yeah. Um, I mean, she could have, I guess she could have done a nice layback spin. Like yes. that doesn't move anywhere. You know, something that stays stationary. Yeah. Like, it was... But she was wearing a big jacket. So I don't know. I, I think it was her idea or somebody told her that this is what she does. You never know, right? If it was, if it was her that decided it or some higher power that said, this is what you're doing and that's it. I mean, you remember the guy in the Chinese opening ceremonies that like went around the arena yeah. like on a wire? Like, come on, this yeah. is. But like, Cam Yuna is so famous here. I was in a taxi yesterday, and the man I didn't even say anything about figure skating, just Olympics, mm -hmm. and he said, "Oh, please tell me your impressions of Yuna Kim." And it was like she's just so famous, and everybody wants to hear if you like her. Like, and I, I don't really know Yuna that well, but it was like, oh yes, I love her because <laughs> I knew that that's what he wanted to hear. Sure, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, yes, you, Kim Yuna, so famous, so famous. Meanwhile, Megan's like, my flip was better than hers, let me tell uh, you. <laughs> and I took out my medal, and I was like, look what I have, just like Yuna. <laughs> no, I didn't say that, I'm just kidding. I'm totally just kidding. You're like, I have three, I have three. <laughs> okay, here's a, here's a quick question, and you just have to be honest. Like, yeah. just totally honest. We're always curious about the identity of the team event. And we know that we hear these wonderful, beautifully like answered moments from skaters where they're like, it's great to be with the team. It's great to test around the ice arena. It's great to have this feeling. Yeah. Um, yeah. But now that you have an individual medal as well as two team medals, surely that individual medal carries much more weight. Like we're oh, just, wow. and we under like I, 
I obviously understand the thrill of being able to compete with your with your countrymen and, and this sort of thing. But I'm just curious your take on like the identity of that event. See, I would never I would never have a conversation with somebody and tell them I'm an Olympic champion. I would use the words I'm an Olympic bronze medalist. See, um, and after Sochi, I didn't go to people and tell them I'm an Olympic silver medalist. But they asked how are introduced I would. Oh, man. Way. You need it. Yes, but that's not the way I would voluntarily Ashley, do it. Other people may yeah. do it. Ashley yeah. Wagner but, is like Olympic bronze medalist, okay? <laughs> like, you are just, you need to embrace the gold. Allie Raisman, yeah. you know, has the team. Jordan Weaver. Well, I'm very happy. And I think, like, half of Michael Phipps, Phelps' Olympic medals are done in team events. Like, right. of course. But the one I dreamt about winning my entire life belongs to that bronze medal. And, of course, the team event. I love it. I have no problem with it being first. I absolutely love it. Do I love it because Canada has an amazing team? Maybe. Maybe I wouldn't love it so much if I, yeah. <laughs> if I was with a country that wasn't so strong. Um, I was getting stressed for you. I was like, if Patrick screws oh up God. the team gold for you, Megan, get his ass in the rink. Like, what? He needs to step being a In the short program, Eric texted me. I was back at my room, and we, we were competing after the short. And Eric was like, oh, my God, I'm so nervous for Patrick. And I said, emotionally detach yourself from that right now. <laughs> like, we cannot, we, we cannot give Patrick our emotions. Can you imagine like, if he skated in the U.S., the U.S. press would have a field day with Patrick. He yeah. is so lucky to be Canadian. Let me tell you. <laughs> like, we love everybody. We support everybody. Yeah. The Olympic all the way. Um, but I, you know what? Patrick's performance in the team long and the in individual long, mm -hmm. that's what he can do. Mm -hmm. I think that he didn't do less than what he can do. I think that mm -hmm. the sport has just gone way too far of what he's capable, like, in, in quads. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I love that team event. I only wish that it maybe came at the end of the games because all the top skaters would do it. Mm. So it would become more of a real contest. Yes. You know, French dancers probably would have done it. Shui and Han probably would have done it if it was after. Mm. Okay. Um, but then you think about the Olympics and like representing your country like that, the team event feels a little bit more Olympic yes. spirit yes. to me than the individual events. Okay. See, I think that this was um, a little bit of games. Like, this is a very smart move on Marie France's part. Because by getting the, by the French not doing it, she doesn't have a pissed off team for a full week that she would have had to do with the Olympics. You have one team that's like disappointed and pissed that they finished behind. But the I leader. understand it was Gabby and Guillaume's decision that didn't want to do it. From what I understand, it was purely them. But I mean, okay. you never know. They stayed at home. They didn't even come to the Olympics till after the team event was all done. Which um, is weird because you went... missed the opening ceremonies and they didn't make the Olympics last time. Yeah. But Chui and Han were the same, and Bo Yan. None of them were here. Yeah, none of them won. Michelle Kwan Olympic. didn't win when she skipped the opening ceremonies. You hear you hear a lot of that, though. And people who choose to like stay in hotels away from the village, mm -hmm. it changes their energy, and they usually tend not to, to be as successful. We, Lynn, but, do you, but as I said, an Olympic silver medal is still a success. We don't want to diminish that. But, but do you find that like creating normalcy and consistency for you in a competition is important? Like, obviously, when you go to like when you won your two world championships, you weren't rooming with a coach like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like you weren't in a group apartment or maybe I don't know. Maybe you were. Wait, you but, can't like, room with Bruno at the world championships. No, um, you, sometimes you, I do. And sometimes I don't. I don't always room with him. Okay. I mean, Julianne and Charlie's coach. I mean, yeah. like, just in yeah, general. Yeah, yeah, different environment, a different setting. Now, if, if suddenly, like, you know, because Michelle in 98 was sort of this first big media hype about, like, oh, not in the village. But if that suddenly upsets the apple cart and is totally different than what you would ever do otherwise, you know, yeah. I don't know, aren't, like, Mariah and Madison, like, rooming together or something? Like, I just think it's, like, suddenly a college dorm room that may throw your entire approach to a competition i don't know it is it is very similar to a call like it's exactly like a college dorm room where we stay but when you go to competitions you're roomed with another skater so you're still and okay. at least here at the games we each have our own bedroom at the olympics mm -hmm. you're both in the same room yeah. room room all the time yeah. um and they you know at least skate canada they they asked about who wanted to room with who they tried to be respectful of that mm -hmm. for for me the issue was that there's nine girls, and um, each room only has four beds. So there was going to be one girl with our team that was the odd man out. And because I was able to room with Bruno, I just got put in with coaches, which I didn't mind at all, actually. Like, 
the old soul in me kind of enjoyed rooming with Jose and we did puzzles and it was fun yeah. actually. And you can get good sleep and you know, all yeah, this stuff. Like yeah. there was nothing rowdy and it was pretty quiet. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that like by a lot of people left after the team event and went some of the U S team, they have some rink somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, that's why some of the U S team members, you didn't see them sitting in the box with their, with their friends. Like, for example, Madison and Zach, they were gone. They weren't even We have in. to keep Zach focused. We cannot yeah, we risk Zach Donahue. I, we have to I heard him. that he needed to be very focused. Focused? <laughs> he needs to hit the twizzles? Do you understand that Marie yeah. France voodoo coach? Hanyu has a voodoo coach, and that woman, that life coach that hangs out with Marie France, Stephanie, whatever her name. Yeah. She, yeah. They, he, she needs to be working with Zach at all times until yeah. next week. He so they weren't here during the team event. Like, they weren't being... Um, because I saw somebody wrote on Twitter, like, oh, like, look at they're not even in the team box supporting their team. But they just literally weren't here. Like, they didn't no. make, like, they didn't choose to be poor sports. They just went to train somewhere else. Um, you personally which feel, happened with a lot of people. Did you feel a different vibe that, also, it was so strange to me that, like, the entrance to the Olympics was the team event, which happened before the opening ceremonies. It just seems, that's I weird. didn't know if you feel that. I know it's in such a different location. You know what I yeah. mean? But I didn't know if that felt like. A, that's a the way it was in Sochi, though. So that's all I. That's how I knew it. Okay. But it is weird, and the energy in the arena really changed by the team long. The yeah. team short. We were kind of like, is this a competition? Like this was so strange. It, was it on, felt weird like on TV, no one was there. Nathan. Yeah. It, the men seemed like not awake, and it the was. Yeah. But I see. I don't like these excuses of competing early. We are not competing that early. Mm -hmm. Like your event is somewhere between. 10 a.m. and 2 in the afternoon. Oh, you mean and I, a day coming. There's no way that you don't train during that time frame when you're at home. I yeah. think they were complaining that they had to get up early for the, the practice, but usually at a competition, you have to get up early for that. And you know what? With the time change, it seems like With everybody just, why wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning this entire time anyway. Absolutely. I don't, like, I don't like these excuses, and we've known the schedule for two years. Mm -hmm. We knew for two years that this was going to be the schedule. So you could have trained like this for the last two years at home to prepare. Yeah, and with such a giant time zone, you know, difference, it's like you could pick whatever your normalcy was. <laughs> like, and, I mean, apart from a few people who maybe have been vocal about um, not liking competing in the morning, most of the athletes I've talked to actually preferred this because when our event was done, we had all day to calm back down. If your event is done really late at night, you don't sleep that night very well. Your adrenaline is still rushed. You're all wound up. Um, we had all day to... You know, we got to do the media without rushing, without feeling like we had to go back to bed. It was really nice. Hmm. I would, I'm all for the ISU doing events like this all the time. <laughs> yeah. Now, does the American media not interview the Canadians? This is weird. I don't like the nationalism of this because, like, I want to hear I from think everyone. I did interview with with the lady backstage. Is it Andrea Joyce? Andrea Joyce. Yes. I did interviews with her every time, and that's it. Okay, because we didn't always so see I, it. You know, I really want NBC to. Because they have like these international broadcasting centers where all the media is um, outside of the venues. Mm -hmm. And we went and did Canada's stuff for an entire day after winning the bronze. But um, I really want to go to NBC's. I heard that they have a juice bar and a smoothie bar, oh, Starbucks. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, we don't have any of that at Canada's media center. In Beijing, okay. in the IBC, there was a Starbucks. Yeah. There's a oh full, God. like, there's a buffet 24 7. Um, I'm so jealous. Is. Yeah, it's it's enormous. Like it's so, I was hoping we'd get a contact from somebody wanting something from us at NBC station, and they're not. Because I remember we went to like the, the pins as little <laughs> interns. We went to the little different ones to try to get pins from all the different broadcasts. Yes. And CBC yeah. has like an office, and NBC is just like a football stadium long. Of they like, they were CBC seems like a lot, and they were like, oh no no, NBC is six times the size of ours. <laughs> they said that it like in they cover I think four or five floors. Like apparently NBC's center at the International Broadcasting Center is ginormous. You know who's paying the money. Then. The I think NBC has all the power of these games. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's why you're so competing in the morning. It's so my ass can watch it live. I, yeah, I don't know. I enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> you can thank us. Well, <laughs> Well, I think we should wrap this up. This is going to be the longest upload ever, but you can watch okay. it. This is the most relaxed you've ever been on the skating lesson, Megan. We got so much out of you oh this time. I am so relaxed right now. Like starting from that long program warm up, mm -hmm. something happened like in my body that I am so like settled and content. And I feel like 
nobody can tell me that I can't say anything anymore because I'm not competing anymore. So I can say what I want. <laughs> you know, sometimes we're told like, oh, don't say this, don't say this, don't say this. And I'm like, man, I'm going to go all out. So I can do whatever, like, I, can do whatever I want. Right. Come on. Yeah. And you're totally great. Yeah. Yes. I try. You know, we just want to go and we just want to do our very best. And that's all we care about, you know. Well, I, I mean, I do when I compete. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you know win. what? People who change their expectations. Mm -hmm. But see, coming here, a win for me was a bronze medal. Mm -hmm. right. see, I, I mean, of course you want to win. I'm competitive, mm -hmm. but I'm not stupid at the same time. I knew where Eric and I ranked coming in here. Mm -hmm. So if I had set my sights on that winning was the only thing I'd be happy with, I'd be setting myself up for disappointment. And when you put your expectations like that, your skating suffers. We've seen that. I've seen that from a few skaters. So you try to be, in fact, yeah. yeah, you try to try to dream, but you try to be realistic as well. Hmm. And I yeah. think that, um, I think that even if things had ended up, we skated like that and we came forth, I would be just as happy. Well, I hope that you get to do yoga with Michelle Kwan. You made her Instagram story for your free Ooh. skate. She was taking pictures. She put a little heart, and I loved it. Yeah. Oh, I hope I will. Maybe we're just going to go do yoga in front of Tara Lipinski. Because Tara's not so nice to, to me and Eric on TV. And she used to be my, my idol. I was actually Team Tara as a child. But now I'm, I have to go with Team Michelle because Tara's not respecting us. Well, she's, well, that's a whole bag of whatever. That's a whole bag. But I would say that you're appropriate in that. You know. That's not about yeah. you. And that's you know what? She would, I loved her and supported her. But now I'm sorry. I, with the way that she treated us, treats us when she commentates, I can't. That's well, okay. go Michelle. Michelle, come do yoga with me. <laughs> <laughs> go do yoga. Hold an edge and look Enough. sexy. Bye, everyone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye. This was fun. So, what are you going to do for the rest of the day?